All right, guys. Uh, let's do you know. Let's do some synthetic man. Only because I God of War is my favorite. I think favorite, my favorite franchise ever. Like unironically, I love that game a lot. I loved the original two. I wasn't a big fan of the third. Maybe I'll replay them. It's been a long time since I played it. Anyway, I love the games. I love the story. Um, I thought the I guess the God of War, the not the, like the next generation. <laughs> what did I call it? God of War one, right? Um, the God of War and God of War Ragnarok, I thought were fantastic. I loved the aging of the character. I love him going through like a like a maturing arc, and I thought that it was great. Uh, just like God of War Ragnarok, I think is the same as God of War two in the sense that they they made the original better. Um, the original games, like the original God of War, was ph phenomenal. It was fantastic, but they took the second game and said, "There's these things that we could improve on," and then they did. And I think the same thing. Well, it, was, it was the same thing with God of War Ragnarok, where like the, the original one or the you know next gen God of War was great, but there were some things that they had to work on. Um, like some of the boss fights didn't necessarily feel meaningful in the beginning, <clears throat> stuff like that. And I thought it was better. I liked it a lot. I thought it was fantastic. But Synthetic Man doesn't. We've seen a couple of his reviews. <laughs> They're less than stellar. But you know what? Maybe this one's solid. So it's called God of War. Ragnarok is not a masterpiece. I disagree, man. I think it was like a legitimate masterpiece. I believe it lost like the game of the year to Baldur's Gate, which is understandable. Probably more replay. If I'm remembering correctly, there's probably more replayability to that. But I personally just like God of War more. It's like my kind of game. Um, so let's just get this party started. And I have no... Man, I have no idea how to review this game. Why? On the one hand, if I'm completely honest with you, this is going to be dislike bombed into oblivion. Was this guy just have like a, a passion for people disliking what he puts out? <laughs> On the other hand, if I oversell some of the game's positives, I'm going to look like a liar, especially to anybody who watch my streams. So I pretty okay. much lose either way, but at the end of the day, I would rather be as honest as humanly possible. It's pretty much the only policy I've stuck to. All right. Since the start of my channel. So I've come to terms with the fact that this will likely be one of the most disliked videos I'll ever make in my likely short career on YouTube. The worst thing a video game can be is boring. In rec. <laughs> okay. Listen, um, I already know what he's going to say. The game is not boring at all, but there's the story, uh, I believe, is like unskippable, right? So if you're not in it for the story, you're not going to have a good experience with it. They do a lot of story. I don't know if you can skip it on the second playthrough. I personally think the story is fantastic. It's fantastic. It's like a playable movie. I think it's phenomenal. Um, but if you're not there for the story, if you don't appreciate it, and if you don't, and I do because I'm an older man. You know, Kratos, the original God of War, came out when I was a young guy with anger problems. Now I'm an old guy with anger problems, right? But I've worked on myself a lot. So I look at Kratos as like, wow, this. It, there was a lot of, it's hard to communicate, but there was a lot of growth. In this character, it was fantastic. It was a lot of it was identifiable. Everything was it was just it was great. Like Ragnarok is one of the most boring <laughs> games what? I've ever played. <laughs> half of this game is either watching a cutscene, walking in a. It's certainly not half of the game, but straight line or engaging in one of the game's many hidden loading screens, whether that be rowing a boat, riding a giant yak, climbing a wall, <laughs> shit we've seen a thousand times. I, I loved it. I mean, when they're, I mean, I didn't even think about it. Like, it was just a load. That might be true. Maybe that was a loading screen. They were hiding it. What I think is great, though, is that there was a little much dialogue and there was so much interest in the lore to me that I was like, oh, these moments were great. Like, they were really positive, meaningful moments. So, I don't know. I think this is just a personal difference in opinion here. And it gets old. This game does okay. not respect your time. And I already know, just based off of these criticisms, you already think I hate this game and have... Uh, I mean, I, I don't think he hates the game. I just think he obviously did not like... This game wasn't for him, based on this. Now, I don't know how he's going to deal with uh, any racism parts of it. Because, you know, we've watched his like, Fallout stuff and he's uh, he's a little racist. Um, you know, maybe... I don't know if he'll uh, how upset he'll be when he finds out that Kratos was voiced by two black men. Kissing. <laughs> they changed the voice actor. But yeah, okay. I have no credibility left, or maybe you thought that a long time ago. But I promise you that I am absolutely trying to make all my right. review of this game as fair as possible, despite the fact that I despise all of the movie games that Sony's been making for like a decade at this point. Okay. Definitely Thank you for the $2 from Michael Fan. Today's Kratos has an impact on me being a father. Yeah, man, I feel that, bro. It sounds so cringe, but like I really identify with the character. I only have a lot of good aspects to them, and this game is no exception. 
So let's just start off with the best part of the game, that being obviously the combat. Now I remember back when God of War 2018 came out that it was pretty controversial, this change in direction. Yeah, you know, I did not like the combat change. Um, I, I like the classic combat change, so the gameplay wasn't really for me. I never said it was, like, bad. This, he seems to be saying, like, the, the, not the gameplay, but the actual story is bad. But it was just not for me. The story was, though, so I really enjoyed playing through it on, like, normal mode. Um but I, f I felt better in, in Ragnarok. That's one of the things I feel like they improved on. Well, maybe I was just more used to it, but it felt better, you know? The biggest change, obviously, being the over-the-shoulder camera, which is still annoying even in this game, honestly. But you do get used to it eventually, and I would personally recommend you turn up the sensitivity on the camera so you can turn around faster, especially since this game has very generous auto-aim. As for the main combat mechanics themselves, I'd say they're pretty fun. I thought they were fun in the last game, too. It does take a while to get going. For some reason, they pulled a Metroid with this game, and Kratos just mysteriously has lost almost all of his abilities and gear from the last game. Yeah, that's weird. That's, one of the, that's actually one of the things I didn't like about God of War 3. The first God of War, you got a bunch of abilities. At the end of the first God of War, or the beginning of the second God of War, you die. And you lose them, and it, like can, they, they explain why you lose your power. And uh, when they did God of War three, I just didn't like how they did it again. You know, I just felt like, oh, this is kind of boring. Like you go to hell again, you lose your power. Wow, what? A, you know. But uh, yeah, sure, that's definitely something that's like bizarre. They, I mean, fuck it. I guess at their point, this is part of the game. But it, it does. It is a little bit weird from a uh, from a canon perspective, I suppose. And so the game kind of feels afraid to give you all of the combat mechanics until about 10 hours in. Well, okay, so the reason why they're not going to give you all the combat mechanics is because um, people have not played it in a while, right? Like, I, from a, a lore perspective, it doesn't make any sense, but from a gameplay perspective, it makes perfect sense for one, people who've never played the game before need to get eased into it. And number two, if you haven't played the game in a while, you need to get eased into it. So it makes sense to take away your stuff and make you re-earn it again, because that's part of the game is like you're learning how to replay the game. And the best way to learn how to play a game is by playing it without getting a tutorial screen. So what they're doing is they're starting you off slow. The enemies will start off easy compared to like whatever your difficulty is. Um, and then you'll like slowly get your abilities again because there's a lot of abilities in that game, which can be overwhelming, especially for like somebody like me. I'm, I, I love the game, but I'm not like a huge gamer anymore, you know, which makes those early combat encounters a bit more boring. It doesn't help that I was playing it on hard mode, which I'll save that for the end since I'm being positive at the moment. But I'd say the combat ultimately feels mostly satisfying. Juggling enemies in the air is fun just like it was in the original games. Runic attacks feel pretty powerful, and the fact that they just use a cooldown instead of some kind of magic meter is honestly more fun to me personally, because then you can use them pretty much every encounter and don't have to rely on magic chests. Kratos also just has a pretty wide range of actions that you can do. I'm yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It was, like, overwhelming for me. <laughs> it was so much for me. It was kind of tough for me to get into it. Because <laughs> there were just so many different fucking abilities in that game. I personally, like, I played it on normal. I tried playing it on the hardest difficulty, and I got, like, halfway through the game. And I was actually doing decently, but I was just like, fuck, I just want to finish this fucking game. You know, it, it, I just want to finish the fucking game and, like, enjoy the storyline. <laughs> So. On top of having light and heavy attacks and the runic attacks. That's how I feel now. Like nowadays, I don't even really worry too much about playing games on like harder difficulties. It's just not worth it. I just want to enjoy the actual storyline, you know? Attacks. You can throw the Leviathan axe. You can use the blades to grab people and pull them to you or yeah, pull your. There's good combos with the two weapons together, too. Self to them. You can buff the blades and axe with their corresponding element. No, I never played the DLC. I might actually replay all the games on stream. I'm debating on it. There's also a meter you can build up by hitting enemies enemies without getting hit yourself that once is full allows you to buff one of your weapons and make all their attacks like twice as powerful which really feels satisfying and rewarding obviously there's also it's kind of interesting because I, I don't know how i feel about uh, things like that that make it so that you can't get hit to, to give you a, a bonus only because like i don't know I, I feel like sometimes there are parts of games where you know it, 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 the game makes you a little bit afraid to to play it you know, you're afraid to take risks in the game a little bit, and that would make me a little afraid to take a risk if I'm trying to build up a meter without getting hit. You know, if that, make, if that makes any sense. So blocking, dodging, parrying. Now, I will say the parry feels pretty weak until your starting shield gets repaired, and then you actually get invincibility frames on the reposts. But before that point, I was very disappointed in the parry. Against many bosses and bosses, you would actually have to parry them multiple times in the same combo just to stop the onslaught which was honestly infuriating. 
but I promise I would stay positive. So, you also have a partner character. In the first game, Atreus would shoot arrows on command. I th yeah, in the second game, they decided to like expand it so you have other like, al alternative partners as well. I think he also had a runic summon, but... I'd honestly like to see another God of War game that's still, that doesn't centralize around Kratos. Part of me actually wanted Kratos to die <laughs> in the game. I just felt like it would have been poetic. It would have just kind of made sense to me for him to die. Like, I know this. I love the character. I just feel like I was like, yeah, you know what? They should just kill him. Let him die off and you know, move on. Let him finally rest. They did such a good build to it, too. I think it would have been perfect if he had, if he had died um, in that game. Honestly, I would have been all for it. Don't quite remember. So in this game, it's not too much different, except now. Your partner is really good at putting one of two debuffs on the enemy that amplifies your other attacks and debuffs. And it kind of goes without saying, but from here on, I'm going to be getting into spoiler territory for various aspects of the, oh, shit, not spoilers. the game. I'm probably going to talk about them for the rest of the video, so this is your last chance to leave. All right, this is where we really are, dude. The gameplay stuff sounded fine. Like, I think it was all personal preference. Like, from a gameplay perspective, I didn't really care. I'm like, I'm not that good at games anymore. So I'm like, eh, whatever. It, felt, it played fine. It, you know, I don't I don't feel the need to play it on harder modes, so I don't necessarily care about that. But this story I thought was great. That, that was what I enjoyed about the game. So, so eventually you get a third weapon, a spear that can generate infinite copies of itself, and you can detonate those spears on Triangle. I actually really enjoyed this weapon. Now, when you first get it, it doesn't have any abilities, so... Yeah, that's like a consistent problem in all the old God of War games, is when you first get a weapon, like, it's not really buffed, so it's kind of... Uh, you can't really use it. It's kind of annoying, but... It kind of feels like shit, which completely ruined the moment, but after you pumped... Yeah, especially since they kind of force you to use it. What the fuck, dude? I suck. ...some XP into it. It's actually probably my favorite weapon in the game. Much like God of War goes to Sparta, playing as a Spartan with a spear and shield just feels right. And the spears that you can detonate in enemies actually juggle them further into the air. And all of the spears' attacks do stun damage, a significant amount of stun damage compared to the blades and the axe. Thank you so much for the five dollars from C Slam Bros. Mad that he learned parry system and enemy patterns. I guess so. Yeah, I don't necessarily like. I said I don't necessarily care. These are like uh, gameplay things. I don't care. He just didn't like the gameplay. It's not like a huge deal to me. You know. So the DPS for this thing is probably the highest in the game, or at least it kind of feels that way. And the rune. I always just go with the classic fucking. Uh... The, the classic fucking uh, Blades of Chaos, you know what I mean? The attacks I got were pretty powerful as well. So yeah, actually great concept. One of the few alt weapons in this series that actually feels satisfying. That's fair. I feel like I've never really, there's never been like an alt weapon or God of War 1 and 2 at least that felt satisfying or like worth using. It took away from uh, like, you know, the it took away from the game. It took away from like the... It was all about the Blades of Chaos, but I feel like they're, I guess, more limited in this game, the Blades of Chaos, because, you know, they have a long range, but I don't know. There's something more satisfying about them in the original games. Last positive I'll mention are the boss fights, which, given this game is 25 hours long, not doing any side content, there's actually a it, lot of... It is long. It is a long game, but I think that's just where games are going nowadays. People want to get, like, a good bang for their buck, you know? Bosses, especially compared to the previous one. I'd say all of the main bosses were at least somewhat fun with the- f Yeah, I liked all the main bosses. I don't think there was a single complaint. First Thor fight at the beginning <laughs> and the Heimdall fight about three quarters of the way through the game probably being my favorite. The Heimdall fight is the only one in the game that required me to think outside the box. Shit, I liked the, I liked the big ass dragon thing. Whatever the fuck that thing was called. I liked that one the most. I was just like personally thought it was like visually beautiful. Ox and actually play differently. So I'll definitely compliment the devs for that. And all in all, it's a solid selection outside of one specific extremely cringy moment in the game. Just remember this boss fight on screen here for later when people... Oh yeah, that boss fight was a little bit annoying actually, but it was still fun. Keep talking about how mature God of War is now. The mini bosses, on the other hand, are a mixed bag. Some of them are pretty great. Some of them, like the hateful, are just fucking annoying to fight. Have random unblockable moves that make no sense. The fucking God of War can't block a random fire skeleton's X swing. My immersion is- Well, I think part of it is, is that you're holding back like the entire game. At least that's like part of the lore is that you're holding back when you're fighting. But like, yeah, sure. It's, it's a little bit bizarre. Um, it's, it's a little bit bizarre. 
that the a literal god of war wouldn't necessarily be as capable as to fight these. Although he is kind of capable. And it's a game. I feel like that's one of the things where it is a game. You know, if you were overpowered the whole game, there would be nothing satisfying about it. That's why we've never had a good Superman game. Because he is like he's a god. So like what's the fun in the game when you're playing a literal god that has no true challenges? <clears throat> so yeah, you know, that's one of those uh, things where you kind of have to sacrifice some of, I guess, the realism for the actual gameplay, or else the game would be unplayable. ...is destroyed. And the first Berserker fight, which is mandatory, by the way, has way too much fucking health. Oh yeah, and I was bumped down to normal at this point, too. When oh, I damn, he gave up, dude. I finally managed to beat him. I think it took me three straight minutes of dodging and countering the same four attacks over and over again to actually whittle down his health bar. It doesn't help that filling the stun meter doesn't give you a free execution type of attack on him. It just well, I mean, listen, like, when it comes to this gameplay, I, I feel like nowadays people, um, they really like Souls games a lot. And so it sounds like God of War tries to appeal to, like, multiple audiences, one of those being, like, super, um, I guess, good gamers, unlike myself. You know what I mean? That want, like, a real, real heavy challenge. Um, and that's why they edit it. That's why they have easier modes for people who are more into like the gameplay or something. That's what I would generally would stick to, like the normal or even I mean honestly I was getting older, maybe even the easy. Fuck it, right? Just opens him up to damage for a few seconds. At least the other berserkers are end game optional bosses that you can come back and fight when you have better gear. They intentionally designed this first one to take this long to kill with only four fucking attacks. But despite my issues with a few bosses in particular, I'd say overall I had fun with the combat when I actually was allowed to fight enemies. Now, of course, you fight enemies constantly. The, the story wasn't that intrusive. <laughs> okay. Of course, I do think the combat does have some flaws, just like everything has flaws. Sure. So I'll just bring up the few that I think are significant enough to drag down the experience. The first issue I'll get into is the enemy variety, as this was something the developers actually praised about this game. And it feels completely unearned because guess what? <laughs> they reused almost every enemy type from the first game. And I well, that doesn't mean that there is an enemy variety. Just because they, well, first of all, it makes sense that they would because it's this exact same world, just a little bit forward in time. So them not doing that would be weird. Um, so that's number one. <laughs> number two, it doesn't mean that there's not enemy variety. I never had an issue with the variety of enemies in the game. Uh, you know, it wasn't something I internalized and I was like, oh, you know what? Let me make a note of this. But I had no issue of the variety in the game. It seemed perfectly fine. I enjoyed it. You know, I don't really... And just having similar enemies from the first game makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, you, it, it's an interesting thing to complain about. Like, canonically, why am I not stronger? I'm a god of war. And then complain that there would be the same enemies in the game. When it's the same fucking world. So, canonically, you know what I mean? But, okay. I mean, exact same animations and attacks. Yeah, why would they change? <laughs> would they get, like, a little... <laughs> would they get a little zesty in the next like, the game? Uh, you know, we've... Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense. We've been, we've been trying to fight them like this. What if we put a little zest on our attack? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Good, good stuff. Same executions, too. And, oh, I could talk about the executions and how okay. almost all of them are lacking any sort of gore, which, yes, the last game also did. Okay, well, that's just a stylistic choice. <laughs> that one's just, like, I had no problem with it. You know, I guess it wasn't as edgy as the first game, but I don't think it's that big of a deal, but okay. It just seems like modern games in general are scared of gore for one reason or another. This game is rated M, so what's the fucking problem? I mean, that's a personal choice. I feel like there's probably more of a thing where uh, they're back in the day, there were, I mean, it still happens now. There's like games and media and whatnot that just try to be gory for the shock value, and it doesn't necessarily enhance what you're en engaging with. Um, you know what I mean? And so I think that they were just like, let's have some, I guess, realistic, you know, for what the, whatever that means, considering the type of game it is, but let's have some more realistic type gore stuff. You know, that's what I would assume is it. I thought it was fine. Hey, Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Phil. This guy <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. What the hell's the matter with you? Thank you so much, Phil. This guy's name is literally Phil has spent $20,000 so far in 2024. Gifted me 50 memberships. That's insane, brother. There's no need to do that. I am truly grateful. Um, What is that? Another 250 bucks? 
All right, so now he spent twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars in twenty twenty. <laughs> I really appreciate that. That's uh, that was I, you know, I I I probably don't show excitement particularly well, but I do appreciate that. That was fucking wild, brother. I really appreciate that. Hopefully, you have the money for it. That's all I'm gonna say. You know, obviously, it uh, it's helpful when you actually have the money for stuff. You know what I mean? So hopefully, you didn't break the bank on that. I'm gonna assume that you're fucking you're an oil tycoon or something. So. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it might. Okay, Pop of God, the new God of War is supposed to be less gory to show a change in person Kratos is. Oh, yeah, that actually makes sense, too, from a canonical perspective. Um, damn. Again, thank you for the, for the fucking 50 gifted. That's fucking crazy, brother. And oh. to get back to the enemy variety, I feel like a lot of the new enemy types are just kind of lame, like generic Viking raiders on Midgard. What well, they are. I don't even know if they're Vikings. I personally, I mean, I wouldn't say generic. I would say that they were simplistic, I guess, if you're going to say anything. But, like, I don't think everything needs to be super flashy and over the top. I don't think this game is trying to be flashy or over the top. Or the Asgard warriors, which are all zombies. The frog enemies that surprisingly show up in, like, three... That shit fucking pissed me off, those frogs. Three different realms. And a lot of the ones that aren't lame visually, anyway, are actually very annoying to fight. Like the new Light Elf variant that's a samurai, or the Asgard warrior who has a Bifrost pick and a hammer. These motherfuckers can attack at lightning speed and have unblockable moves, or moves you have to parry. Yeah, you gotta get good. That's a skill issue, brother. <laughs> you gotta just get better at the game. I'm not even trying to be an asshole. That's just... Yeah, that's the game, brother. You know, that's what it is. <laughs> Okay. And can dodge out of the middle of combos, shit like that that just makes them not very fun to engage with unless you're spamming runic attacks. So, listen, it kind of sounds like this guy is not much better than me at video games, to be honest with you, which I'm surprised. I'm 34, and I this guy, you had a... Like, I beat it on normal, and I didn't have any issue. When I was playing it on, like, very hard, again, I got up to that, like, boss that I said I liked a lot, that, like, dragonish boss where you, you fight with Freya. Um, You know... That's just skill issue. <laughs> that is annoying, but that's like the game is supposed to be difficult, right? Like it's supposed to be tough. Um, you know, you're supposed to be mentally engaged with the game. You're supposed to have to try. There's supposed to be a sense of reward when you get through it. If you were playing it on easy and you had these criticisms, I'd be like, oh, okay, maybe because the game is supposed to be easy. But it sounds like right now he's just complaining. That <laughs> the game was a challenge. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. And it's fine to complain about them while you're playing the game, right? Like, oh, this is fucking annoying. But afterwards, you know, you're supposed to be like, yeah, you know, it was hard as fucking, it pissed me off, but I appreciated the challenge. That's usually how you would engage with that like, afterwards, no? And for my last major criticism of the combat, let's talk about hard mode somewhat briefly. Don't let them play the old Assassin's Creed games. Aren't, weren't they easy as fuck? I played the first one. It was so easy. What are you talking about? I feel like that game was hell easy as fuck. As tempting as it is of the combat, let's talk about hard mode somewhat briefly. As tempting as it is to talk about this in length, because I unfortunately played about two-thirds of the game on hard mode, or give me no mercy. It's a waste of time because most people will never play it on hard, and trust me, it's a mistake. And not for the reason you're thinking. Most people would think, oh, the enemies just do too much damage, or they have too much health. Well, I did. Oh, no, they're, they're difficult. They're harder. Yeah, they're, it's a pain in the ass. Thank you so much for Roomba Rocket for the $2. This guy probably loves how white Kratos is. I mean, maybe. We'll find out. I'm, I'm waiting for the spicy race take. So far, it's just disagreeable. We haven't gotten anything racist. You know, we <laughs> like the typical stuff we've seen. So maybe it's not so bad. Didn't find out what the real problem was until about 15 to 20 hours in. Because okay. originally, I did turn down the difficulty from hard to normal just a few hours into the game, but it turns out there's a bug where sometimes your difficulty change will not save even after the checkpoint restart. So I actually okay. ended up playing the game on hard for about eight more hours until I finally decided to check it again after dying really quickly to Neathog. All right. Sometimes I wonder if, like, the difficulty is bugged or something. Like, I never actually left hard mode. It's bad. Let me just double check. Wait, what? Wait a minute, what? He must have turned the game off or something. Okay. Wait a minute, guys. I've been on hard mode the whole time. Unfortunately, I let chat vote on whether or not I should stay on hard, so I still ended up playing on hard all the way up until that first Berserker fight. And after a few more comments... I feel like um, if you're trying to review God of War and you're not somebody who's like a big God of War fan, which this guy doesn't seem to be, because he's obviously not a fan of the story. 
Like he's not a big God of War fan. He's not a God of War fan really in general. It's a game for him to play, which is fine. But if you're not a big God of War fan who like really enjoys either the combat or really enjoys the story, I see no reason why you would even bother playing it on the difficult mode in the first place. Like what 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 are you what are you getting out of it at that point? Um so I don't really understand why you would bother doing that. <laughs> it seems like kind of a weird uh, weird play, brother, uh, brother. Weird play to make on that one. But uh, cuz you're going to you're obviously going to complain about it. If you're not like if you don't truly love the game and you're playing it on this like hardest difficulty, which I think that is what it is. Um or is that the hardest one? Um hardest God of War <sighs> difficulty. Uh, give me God of War. Oh, he said, give me no mercy. So he didn't play on like the hardest difficulty. Oh, damn. I went from the hardest difficulty and I just put it back on normal because I was like, fuck this. I'm not big into the combat personally. But like, why play it on harder mode then? Other like, I mean, I imagine it's one of those like ego things where it's like, oh, I'm a streamer. I'm supposed to be good at games. I'm not, bitch. <laughs> combat encounters. I finally figured out what hard mode really does. It gives every enemy in the game super armor. Yeah, like everybody health and damage and shit, yeah. Yes, even basic enemy types. Yeah, it makes them harder to kill, okay. So my original recording for this combat section was actually much more negative than this, because I was very annoyed by the fact that every single enemy would either dodge out of the middle of your combo or attack straight through the motherfucking God of War's X-Wings. Well, yeah, you're the you're playing it on the hard difficulty. To the chest. I just figured it was a normal gameplay mechanic that only heavy attacks and runic attacks would actually stun the enemy because I don't think I've ever encountered a hard mode that introduces super armor. What a horrible fucking idea. <laughs> okay, why? That said, there was one upside to playing the game on hard and then later on normal. That being the realization that enemies have way too much health even on normal mode. What the hell were they thinking that every single enemy in the game takes at least six hits to kill from the motherfucking God of War? Now again- I think they've just made- they didn't want it to be too easy. And once you have runic attacks and all these different weapon buffs and things, that isn't really the case anymore. In fact, by the end of the game, I was pretty much just swapping between my three weapons, spamming the light and heavy runic attacks, and everything was dead. So the combat was still fun. This is not me, like, counteracting my previous statements. I still think the combat is good, I just think the enemies have too much fucking health. I think in a full-blown RPG, which I wouldn't consider this one, it is an action game with light RPG mechanics, but a full-blown <laughs> sure. RPG like Dragon's Dogma, which I actually played a little bit of directly after I finished this game on stream. In the early game, enemies do feel like they have too much health because your attack is too low, but that's built into the game's systems, so that once you're level 50 and have better gear, you can kill all those pussy-ass enemies in one hit. There isn't really an equivalent in God of War. There's only one time during the game's story where they purposely throw enemies with less health at you to make you feel powerful, and that was one of my favorite encounters in the game. These stats attached to armor seem to have a very minor influence on your overall stats. Someone actually did testing for the original game and found this out, and it seems like they haven't changed anything. So the only things that matter are the passives, which range from incredibly situational to actually pretty damn good, and your overall gear level, which is by far the most important thing. Once again, it feels like this game was designed primarily for casual gamers, people who don't care about stats or numbers or min-max. Well, probably casual RPG gamers, maybe. But again, like you're complaining how difficult it is, so clearly it's not necessarily designed for like the uh, like the absolute most casual person. Thing you just equip the gear that has the highest number and move on. And the few people who do care, that gear is saved specifically for the end game. So make. I mean that makes sense to me. Like I like again like I I like the story a lot. I like the characters a lot. The gameplay was secondary to me. It was kind of fun, but it wasn't like really my jam. I feel like a lot of people are like that, and it makes perfect sense to do that too. Because if you're somebody that's transitioning from the old God of War like top down play style to the new God of War, you're not going to you're not necessarily going to be in it for the game play, right? You're going to be in there for the story and the growth, and which they did such a phenomenal job, and the acting was fantastic. Makes you question why. But like, yeah, I think this guy is the casual. <laughs> he seems to be worse at video games than me, which is fucking crazy. Why the gear system even exists? Well, I feel like the obvious answer is the same answer that you could give for any modern game that has crafting or a million side quests. People like that. It's, it's to appeal to like some people who really like to get into games. 
like specific games, uh, which I'm not like one of those people. I like very linear style games where you kind of just like bang through it. That's my kind of thing. Or activities scattered throughout the map. The AAA industry all copy off of each other. They see what works for one company and they steal some of those concepts and add it to their game. Listen, I mean, that's probably true, kind of. Um, but the God of War game is phenomenal. There's a, there, there's another interpretation is that they look at what players want and they try to appeal to them, right? Like, I don't think that the God of the God of War games are not malicious in their delivery. They don't try to like, money grab as much as possible. They are like really good. They're fun. I mean, I think they're phenomenal. Maybe I'm biased. So like they're looking at the average player and where they're at with what they enjoy in a game. And they're like, Oh, like let's appeal to them. But it sounds like if we take what his word for it, they didn't over appeal to them. So like people like me who are just kind of casually in it to play the game, you know, the systems aren't too overly complicated because I hate a bunch of overly complicated system. Like it's just a fucking annoying as shit to me. They call it feature creep, right? And while personally I hate crafting, I actually usually like RPG yeah, me mechanics. Too. They're just too bare bones in these last two games. So now that we've talked about combat pretty thoroughly, it's time- <gasps> Thoroughly, get it? God of War? Thor is in it? We talk about level design. This is not going to be a long section because the level design is very simple and exactly the same for every realm in the game. Stop me if you've heard this one before. It's a set of combat arenas connected with linear hallways. Everything that's in between a combat encounter is either a puzzle or a minor optional little side pathway that has a treasure chest at the end. Um, I guess. I mean, is that is that atypical? Most games are fairly repetitive, similar combat system, system in similar places. Um, so I feel like that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but okay. I know <coughs> a shit ton of you are going to have no problem with this whatsoever. You might not Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, the game is still pretty immersive, so. Even notice that it's all about they're making a live action god of war you should audition well i don't think i think a little overweight for that and i wonder if it'll be any good until linear hallways but i just want to remind you that back when final fantasy 13 came out everyone called it final hallway 13 and the resemblance is truly uncanny it's michael yeah it's michael right He's safe and serene here I can't go right. Hey, Michael. Yeah? Try going left. I mean, this is, I believe, the introduction to the game. It's quite literally built on a linear pathway, right? No? Is that not? <laughs> I can't go left. Hey, Michael. Yeah? Like, the open world aspect of the game is somewhat limited. Like, it's not necessarily the biggest focus to, like, side quests and stuff. I mean, this is a criticism I don't really care about, so... Try to play the game. We nearly took each other's heads off. But he's sorry. I thought I was playing the game, John. But I've been using the wrong controller the whole time. And now this has become increasingly common in any single-player game that doesn't feature a sandbox. Now these last two God of War games have featured both, sort of, anyway. The mini sandboxes are just islands connected by a glorified loading screen. So it's not all that different, but at least it has the illusion of exploration, right? Which is much better than the hallways, I'm not shitting on it. If you see a treasure chest right across an invisible wall that you could just feasibly jump over, which of course you can't fucking jump in half of modern games either, which is just bizarre. Everything feels like a hallway in a circle and a hallway in a circle in this game, and there's only so many ways I can complain about that before it gets tiresome. Just know that I'm not asking for another sandbox or open. I mean, again, like the, the stylistic choice of not jumping is just like what they went with when it comes to like a gameplay thing. And I think that if you're just going to buy into the gameplay, then you're not going to really complain about that. Like, oh, yeah, it's a little goofy, but that's, I guess, just kind of how it is. That's what they decided to go with it. It probably makes it a little bit easier to limit um, not jumping up and down or else that would add too many different things that they have to fuck with from like a bug perspective. I imagine you could, uh, you could do quite a, or exploits. You could probably get away with quite a few exploits if you, um, don't have to worry about that. So that's probably the reason why they made that choice. I mean, I don't, I didn't care. Like it was like something that's like, oh, this is silly. And then you just kind of move on from it. It doesn't seem like a particularly big deal to me. Open world. <clears throat> I'm just asking for a little bit more player interactivity, a little bit more actual control over the game player choice right i know it's a bit of a meme term 
but when you restrict my controls so heavily by putting invisible walls everywhere, it makes the game less fun every single time. I honestly, playing through this game, I don't, this is just wasn't something I, <laughs> this wasn't something I like was focused on. I'm kind of shocked that like I don't, I don't, th I, and maybe I'm wrong. I feel like most people didn't care about that. Does that sound weird? I feel like most people were just like, oh, it was cool. It was great. Like, I, I don't know. I think that they did a good job hiding the invisible boundaries and not really making it seem like you were super restricted in the way that they presented the game to you. I thought it was fine, but oh, it's just, I guess, a difference in opinion. Without exception. So we might as well talk about the puzzles, too. I fucking hate the puzzles. Every single puzzle has this- God of War's always had puzzles. Same exact solution. You look around the room and you throw your axe or you throw your blades. That's it. The difficulty ranges from extremely easy and bright. Well, this one is not throwing axes or blades. This is using, uh, like Freya as one of her powers. So, <laughs> kind of showed on the screen that what you're saying isn't necessarily correct. So, brain dead to weirdly difficult just because you miss something obvious or you forget how a mechanic works. People made fun of me multiple times on the streams because I forgot a simple mechanic. You might just suck at the game. Because honestly, I had trouble with some of the puzzles too. I was just like, I suck. I, I, I'm at a point where in my life where I'm just like, yeah, I think I'm the problem. You know, maybe you just kind of suck at games and you didn't think about like a solution or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's possible. I mean, I, I, I just, I'm not sensitive about it. I'm just like, oh, okay. I guess I just kind of suck dick, you know? Nick, like runic arrows. Uh, I guess I'm kind of fucking cringe. Can explode fire, which made a puzzle way more difficult than it was supposed to be. But the puzzles just feel completely pointless and like padding because they feel less like puzzles and more like a game of I Spy. There's almost no actual thinking involved. And look, I know in the original God of War games it wasn't that much different. Just replace I Spy with block puzzles and you have essentially the same thing, right? But there were way too many puzzles in this game. Yes, some were just optional Norn chests. But do you really think I'm going to ignore this loot right in front of me? No. The game is 25 hours long. Why the hell do you need this many puzzles, man? It makes no sense. Uh, I guess to increase the runtime for people? I mean, it just sounds like you're not good at the puzzles, brother. And it's okay, you know? And that's not even mentioning the backseat. But I guess this is his opinion. Gaming from the NPCs. Every single one of the story mandatory puzzles, one of the characters will literally give you the solution if you take too long. Wouldn't you be happy about that? That they're guiding you in the path? Like, oh, I'm kind of suck at this. <laughs> and then the game's like, hey, do this. That seems like a positive, no? Which doesn't sound so bad, right? Except, how long do you think is too long? Just take a guess. It's less than whatever you think it is. It's like one minute, dude. Okay, so uh, why, why are you complaining about the pay? Like, are you complaining? Um, I don't know why you're complaining. You're complaining that the puzzles exist, but then you're compl and they're like annoying and you forget half the time of a simple mechanic that you have. And then you're complaining because they give you the solution if you're taking it too long. I feel like this is this is the this is the feature that was for us. This was the feature that was for us to 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 be implemented for us because we are slow. <laughs> like what the fuck? There have been several puzzles in the game where I was actively in the middle of solving it and the character told me what to do. It pissed me off so goddamn much. Fire for something. Can you turn it somehow? Yeah, I can turn it, but I don't. I haven't even figured out the puzzle yet, woman. Give me a second. You swing that torch to the other Shush. side and burn the bramble. Shush. Now this is a fair criticism. Women talking, very annoying. I'm gonna kill you. Ten out of ten. It babies you told you exactly what to do. What the hell? Shut up. What are you doing? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, listen, I've had my retard moments during these last few streams. Whoa! I'm not- I won't pretend I- Hey, stop it. I didn't. What? Stop. 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 I'm putting this in the video. Just smack a bitch, dude. She'll stop talking. I'm putting this in the fu- She doesn't seem like the kind of person that would stop talking if you smacked her, though. Fucking video. This is- a, No, you can't defend this. You can't defend this. And do you want to know why the developers did this? You'll never believe it. It's because of Dark Side Phil, DSP. And if you don't know who it is, it's not worth explaining to you. But let's just say he's one of the worst gamers of all. You think that they made it specifically for Dark Side Phil and not for a general audience of people that may not necessarily get the puzzle instantaneously? All time. He is notoriously okay. horrible at every video game he plays. And they fucking designed their game around him, of all people.
why do we think that? Like, is that confirmed? I feel like that's just not true. I feel like they probably that I, there's no way they designed it around him explicitly. So now it's finally but, time okay. to get to the story. As you can probably tell by how much is left of the video, I had a lot to say, and most of it is not positive. As hard as I tried right. up until this point to be as fair as I possibly You could turn that off? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh of puzzle prompting. No, you can't turn it off. Apparently, you're not allowed to turn it off. Um, so yeah, apparently you cannot turn that off. We could to this game. This is about where that stops. I f sorry. What was he saying? Mostly tell by how so now it's finally time to get to the story. All right, this is what I'm really concerned with the story because it was phenomenal. As you can probably tell by how much is left of the video, I had a lot to say and most of it is not positive. Why? What is wrong? What could possibly be wrong with the story that bothers you? As hard as I tried up until this point to be as fair as I possibly could to this game, this is about where that stops. All right, let's I see what we got fucking here. hated this story. So why are you watching? Why are you playing? <laughs> the story was phenomenal. I don't even think that I would ever accept a criticism about the story. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't. I thought maybe I'm too biased, but I'll I'll try to keep an open mind. But the story is fantastic. It works really well. And I think it works really well for the audience growing up, especially like a mostly male audience from the original God of War games that are now more mature into these games and they can identify with a more like a maturing Kratos. So what I, I you know, and part of it calls on to like, you know, the old, old mythology. What is he? What? Okay. I honestly struggled to think of anything I actually liked about it. How about like the growth, the human emotions? Everything was like like humanly logical, like right. <clears throat> Everything was uh, very like that's how you would expect somebody to act that went through these particular issues, right? Like uh, Kratos and, and and Freya having their issue because you know he killed her son, and then like them. So there's so much, but then them like kind of coming to a point where they become allies in some capacity and like the slow build and the fact that she didn't want to kill Kratos' son out of like revenge, but she didn't necessarily blame. It's very complicated feelings. I thought it was fantastic. And I mean anything. And there's a reason that non-Sony fans call these games movie games because they really are fucking movies. 70% okay. of this game is some type of cutscene. Seven. That's a fine criticism. Again, I didn't mind it. I like that kind of stuff. It's a fine criticism, but you're not saying that, like, hey, there was a lot of movie stuff. You're saying you didn't like it? What is it not to like? 70% is not spent actually playing the fucking game. Okay. Down to some of the quick time events not even being real quick time events, as in you cannot fail them. Okay, you don't want me to hit the prompts, right? Oh, no, you have infinite time, don't you? <laughs> well, maybe this is because you're on normal. <laughs> it might be what it is. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10, 12 out of 10. Every, every game Sony makes. There's no way he's playing this on hard mode. This is him probably playing on medium, maybe, or probably easy at this point, but okay. This is a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> Normally, I would never spend over half a video talking about the story, but when over half the game is the story, I fear I have no choice. So here we go, the complete story breakdown of God of War right, Ragnarok. So Ragnarok is a direct sequel to the last one, to no surprise, but there has been a time skip. I think it's an undefined amount of time, so I'll just assume it's... F yeah, uh, I believe a Fibble Winter has started, and now we're making our way to, like, Ragnarok, yeah. Four years, Atreus has hit puberty, and no, that's not a specific plot point, but it might as well be. It um, it's part of the story, he's maturing. It's Kratos dealing with his kid, maturing, yeah. It doesn't even matter, because despite literally being given a waifu, he doesn't show any sexual interest in her whatsoever. What, what does that matter? <laughs> I'm confused. Why does the game need to be like super horny to you? I don't really understand. <laughs> I don't really understand that criticism. Why does he? Why does he need to be like jacking off out of the game? 
<laughs> Listen, I'm a I'm a gooner, right? But like he's a kid that's like in love with a girl. Uh, what do you why does he need to want to fuck her constantly? I don't understand. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't even think about that. I'm a fucking degenerate. And I didn't even think, hmm. He hasn't really been talking about wanting to fuck that puss. Like, I, <laughs> I don't understand, brother. It turns out in the time between games, okay. Atreus and Kratos have literally just been hiding in their house, waiting for the world to end. I wish I was fucking joking. I, I guess. I mean, the, the Ragnarok, the apocalypse had started, and he was just kind of, like, waiting it out. He doesn't trust any of the other gods. Um... Yeah. And one of the things that's interesting about like these types of mythologies, just to be absolutely clear, is a lot of the times they're like self-fulfilling. So like if you do something, sometimes doing the something to try to stop the something that's happening will create the something. So, you know, when you watch anything um, that's like, uh, you know, really historically based, but like Greek and Roman like mythology based, you know, like I'm rewatching the show Vikings. Some of it comes off as different from, I guess, a regular a piece of media. Because they're following particular guidelines that other movies or scripts may not necessarily follow. But it made sense. He was very distrustful of everybody else. He wanted to just stay to himself. He didn't want to cause any more like harm or problems. He wanted to just stay confined to him. Um Yeah. But yes, despite And like to him, it's like to him, it's like it's not everything is his battle to over to deal with. Yeah. An apocalyptic winter coming to Midgard, the heroes do nothing. It turns out that Freya has been trying to kill Kratos for the last four years, but despite knowing exactly where he lives, she somehow has failed every time. Probably because he's stronger than her. Right? Right? Men are stronger than women, dude. <laughs> despite the game trying to tell us that Freya is totally a threat, guys, she's a super badass. She is a threat because Kratos doesn't want to kill her. Kratos doesn't want to kill any more gods. There's a huge part of it. First of all, he feels bad because he killed her son and she understands he understands how complicated that is emotionally. Uh, second of all, she is a capable threat. And third, like he doesn't want to kill gods. It's a huge thing when he kills it was Himdall, right? Like he doesn't want to kill any more gods. In fact, that was one of the things that apparently spurs um, Ragnarok is the killing of a god. I don't remember if he knows that or not. Um, so he might have known that, which could explain why he didn't want to kill a god. But like, yeah, it makes sense. She could probably even take Kratos. You know, I would have beaten you. What? Earlier, if Atreus hadn't been there. Mm, perhaps. We could go again, find out for certain. I would rather not. I'll bet you wouldn't. Yeah, and that's probably not true. That's her thinking that she would. But all the player knows, like, ah, this bitch is fucking, she's, she's crazy. Because he's holding back the entire time when she is not holding back. That's the implication to the player, just to be clear. So the story really begins with Fenrir dying. You can consider this the first of many Ryan Johnson-esque subversion moments in this story. Because if you know anything about Ragnarok from actual Norse mythology, you know Fenrir is a big part of it. Yeah, and then they take, like, there's like four parts to everybody's soul, and they like, put the soul in another dog. Yeah, okay. The game also tries really hard to tug at your heartstrings here, but we literally just met this wolf. We've never seen him before. I don't know. I was kind of sad, brother. I don't before, <laughs> so it doesn't work. Okay. Literally, the first 20 minutes are one giant cutscene. You don't even really get to play the game unless you count engaging with a quick time event and moving the analog stick left or right as gameplay. Okay. Atreus runs off into the woods. Kratos chases him. Turns out he can now turn into animals. Yes, the biggest character development for Atreus is that he is now a furry. I guess. I mean, like, I don't know if there was historical, uh, there's a historical anchor there, but it wasn't really a big deal. I mean, his mother was a giant, so. And so Kratos now determines that his son can't be trusted since he can't control his emotions or something. What? Or something? What are you talking about? He feels like he's he's gonna struggle to trust. What? Because his his son couldn't control his emotions in the first place. And now when he gets emotional, he turns into a fucking animal where he loses control of himself. What are you talking about? The story makes perfect sense here. They explain all that. Remember this plot point for later. Why? Then Odin what? and Thor finally. Sh it's a pretty normal human thing too, for like, especially for guys of like having an issue with their anger. Like I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't know. Okay. Show up, and honestly, the game could have just started here. 
And this is the second major point of... Well, why would they start right out of boss? Like, oh, the hardest boss. Like, they're not... That would be stupid. That would be really dumb if they started there. You're saying that the game could have started with a boss fight? Like, like a Thor boss fight? I don't really think that's true. I think that it's probably better off if they don't start. Good for you to get into the game, get your juices flowing. You know what I mean? Kind of, you know, that makes a little more sense. But okay, maybe I'm, I mean, I know there's a quick time event against Freya is like the first thing you do, but I'm pretty sure you fight regular enemies before then fighting um, Atreus as a dog or of a bear. When, you know, subversion because despite God of War 2018 building up Odin and especially Thor as being like these badass, super powerful guys, they are what Odin looks like a frail old man, and so Odin looks like his voice actor. And he's a threat by the end of the game. Like, this is one of the things they do in God of War, is they have the characters look like the voice actor. Obviously, not so much Kratos, because he's already an established character. But this is, like, I have it I have it up here. This is literally his cat. This is what the guy looks like. And I liked the decision to do that. It was cool. I like this actor. He's very good. And he did a great job being uh, Odin. And Odin, you know, it depends on what mythology you're reading. Odin doesn't have to, like, Odin's main attributes is being kind of a dick, a manipulative piece of shit. He doesn't have to be this big, strong, hulking person. So, like, he, like, he's, that's what he is. He's, he's, he, play, he plays it really well. He's supposed to be kind of like a manipulative person who takes advantage of other people and lulls them into a sense of security to get what he wants. And he did a phenomenal job doing that. Sounds like a snake oil salesman. That's Odin. You know who I am? Back before winter set in, there were some misunderstandings. Regrettable ones. But I think we all have a better idea of who we're dealing with. Now, what you did to his boys. Self-defense. And some people have implied that he's supposed to be a Trump allegory, but I will- What the f- nobody's implied that, just stop it. We'll give the developers the benefit of the doubt this time. He's like lore accurate Odin, what are you talking about? And just say he's supposed to be some generic fascist smooth talker. I he's supposed to be a manipulative Odin, who's the bad guy. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. Thor is a fat fuck alcoholic. Yeah. Base as fuck. He's also very muscular. Who has dead? And he looks like his. He looks like his character, his actor. Yeah. This is the same guy who played uh, Beta in The Walking Dead. Just so you guys know. So he looks similar to his voice actor. Which makes sense that they would make the characters look like the voice actors because it's very easy to be like, oh, that voice matches that person when it's based on the person, right? That's not a hot take. But okay, they made him a fat guy. Cool beans. Eddie issues. We yes, of course he has daddy issues. Learn most of that until later, but we might as well get it out of the way now. And God, okay. I just fucking hate this design. Anyone who says why he looks like a strong man has never actually seen a strong man. You're literally showing Eddie Hall, which is <laughs> what you showed Eddie Hall. <laughs> what the fuck? You're all right. This is 2021 World Strongest Man. I, which I'm curious of. Um. I've never, I mean, I haven't followed Strongman in a while. It's cool. Good for him. You showing Eddie, Even Ed Eddie Hall is fucking fat as hell. He's lost weight because he's starting to do, he's starting to cut because he wants to do bodybuilding, but he's a big guy. Eddie Hall at his fattest had more muscle definition than this. He's a god of, he's a, he looks like a, I mean, the guy looks like a strong man. No, <laughs> Thor looks like a strong man. He's not quite as defined, I guess, but what, this is just a weird criticism. Whatever, I'm wasting too much time on this. Yeah, it's a really weird point. You don't like that Eddie's fat, even though it may, it works fine with the character. Basically, Odin came to offer peace. He's so fucking super, look at him, he's like super muscular. Kratos refuses, which might as well be a declaration of war. No, he doesn't come to offer, that. Eh, mm, it's not quite as uh, simple as he comes to offer peace. What? Just keep that in mind for later, and so you okay. get your first huge boss battle with Thor, which actually was... I don't remember the specifics, but it made sense. He wants to say out of... I forget exactly what had happened. Um, I, we'd have to we'd have to literally rewatch it, but I remember it actually makes sense. Like, do we have to watch the, the opening cutscene of, like, what was... Oh, we, maybe we do. Hold on. <clears throat> maybe we have to actually watch this um, in the thing. 
All right, let's let's rewatch this just this part here. What do you want? How about peace? We're gonna fast forward a little bit. How does peace strike the esteemed retired god of war? How about we just don't kill each other? How about you stay home, kick up your feet, seek no quarrel with me, and I'll have none with you. Of course, it means that that one, that one has to stop his search for tear. Uh, okay, I think I remember what yeah. happened now. We know what you've been up to. Stop it. Tear's old ways are dead. He is dead. You understand? And then that's it. There was square. Shit, I'll even sweeten the deal. I'll let you keep the prisoner that I know you stole. <laughs> that's right. I know you're in here somewhere, you silver-tongued little... So I'm pretty sure the reason he did this is he didn't want to, like, impede on his son's quest. He's trying to let his son grow and become a man. Well, shit. Why should we believe all of you? What have your promises ever been worth? There he is. And that's another thing, too, is that he's not a trustworthy person, and they have Mimir there to tell him that. Oh, it's all making sense if you just watch the scene. Like, his interpretation is dog shit. This is my whole partner in crime. He's lost weight. If he tells you Snow is white, he's lying. What kind of wisdom is that? Can't the smartest head alive see past himself? See that we all want the same thing? All right. Here's a deal I know you can trust. I'll settle your debt with my ex. Keep Freya off your back. Keep your boy safe. That's really all you want, isn't it? So what do you say? Yeah, it's okay. So this all makes sense. So um, he just, I don't know, maybe he either he's dishonest or he's dumb. Like, there's no other way. He rejects it pr primarily because he cannot be trusted. So he doesn't make the deal. And he also wants to let his son kind of explore a little bit and, like, do his own thing. Right? So it makes perfect sense that he would reject this. <laughs> like, but okay, cool stuff, man. It's really fun. One of the most fun parts of the game, for sure. Very similar to the first game where you fight Balder in the beginning. And we also find out... Oh, he also admitted he didn't want Odin to kill Freya. Oh, I didn't even understand. I didn't even get that. But, like, that makes sense that the implication is that I will kill Freya for you. So if he doesn't want her to die, that would make an even more sense as to why he wouldn't, like, go through with it. Fantastic. Okay. During that conversation, that Atreus somehow was sneaking off during the in-between years searching for Tyr in the other realms. And of course, Odin found out as he has spies everywhere. Okay. So Kratos eventually decides, okay, son, let's go look for Tyr, which they put off for no reason, by the way. That was Kratos was afraid to in interfere anymore and cause like, and do any more anything. But again, he's trying to like trust and love his son and allow his son to go on like a quest of his own that he feels like he needs to go on. So obviously the setup of the previous game why do they keep trying to make Kratos the reluctant protagonist? And because he, the first games were about him constantly involving himself and ruining like every part of his fucking life. That's why. And honestly, the truth is he's not even really the real protagonist of this game. Atreus is. That makes perfect sense. I mean, again, I thought that they should have killed Kratos off at the end of the game. Because, like, I think that there's, I mean, that's not really true. Kratos is the protagonist, but he's an aging protagonist that, like, and it makes sense to try to pass the torch. It's more like, to me, I got the tones that, like, it started as Kratos and it slowly becomes, um, it slowly becomes Atreus as time goes on. That's the, the implication there. So, like, yeah, that's not a bad thing. It makes sense, for, especially for the longevity of it. You know, you can't have Kratos alive forever. Why not? And you play as Atreus for roughly half the game. That's probably the most reasonable criticism is that the Atreus parts can be a little bit like boring, which I didn't really necessarily hate them, but they could be a little bit like frustrating to deal with. So and his gameplay segments are the worst. They're completely fucking brain dead. It basically I mean, it makes sense because they're introducing you to a new character that like, you haven't really played. So it makes sense for them to not make it a super hard thing because it's not the primary focus of the game. But again, like, yeah, I, there was something to criticize from a gameplay perspective. I'm actually surprised that he didn't criticize it until just now. He turns the game into a third-person shooter where you just charge up elemental arrows and then charge up normal arrows. I mean, you could melee fight with him if you wanted to. And the game has such generous aim assist that you don't even feel like you're playing the... You played it on, like, normal or easy, so yeah, of course. ...fucking game. I purposely didn't talk about Atreus during the combat section because it would be purely negative. 
Even on hard mode, his segments were completely fucking brain dead. I think I only died one time, and it's because I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, so rather anticlimactically, you find Tyr in Svartalfheim, the dwarf realm, and Ryan Johnson's subversion number three, the god of war, is a fucking pussy. Okay, so just to be clear, this is a spoiler alert. This is actually Odin <laughs> trying to trick Kratos is number one. Number two, considering Tyr was locked up and like tortured is like for a very long time, it kind of makes sense that he would be a pussy. He has like, he's legitimately fucking traumatized. <laughs> what are you talking about? And he does absolutely nothing for the most of the story. Now, obviously, those of you who finished the game know why. And in retrospect, it is slightly justified. Slightly? What? Even considering the twist, this still comes across like the developer spitting in the face of the player. Because no, it doesn't at all. It comes off as like lore accurate. Odin did shit like this. He would turn into people more like like mythology wise and he would go and fuck with people you especially have sex with girls you probably would have liked them a lot because he was horny you know because they spent so much time building up tear in the last game that when we finally meet him he's fucking worthless then in the next section of the game i i don't i don't know man i don't think that this i don't know this guy just doesn't really seem to understand anything i don't i don't really know what resonates with him he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that appreciates like any type of intelligent or nuanced story like it doesn't he doesn't seem to get it i i that, that's fine i mean you do you but this is just not for you this isn't supposed to be a story that's like everything is handed to you like a baby i mean again we're talking about the guy who didn't know that vault text sold votes votes from from uh, fallout but okay uh, whatever game the characters don't really know what to do and one of the major themes of the game reveals itself being that Kratos is an overprotective father, and despite being the god of war, he doesn't want war, which actually doesn't make any sense given what we saw at the beginning of the game. What are you talking about? He's the god of war. He's like the entire first and like second game is him ta constantly talking about the mistakes he's made, how he doesn't want to kill gods anymore because only bad things happen when you kill gods. And he does. Oh, dude, this guy's really stupid. It doesn't make sense because he didn't want peace in the beginning. No, he didn't say he didn't want peace. He didn't want Freya to die. He didn't want to make a pact with Odin because he's deceptive and he's friends with Mimir and he trusts what he has to say and he wants to let his son like kind of go on his own, like I guess, a journey and experiment. What are you talking about? It makes perfect canonical sense. I find it interesting that you think that like you have a better dial on these things than the actual creators of the game. When Kratos refuses Odin's offering of peace. He didn't take it as a serious offering of peace. Who would have thought? That's it. Seriously, somebody explain this. I just did. It's very simple. He doesn't want war, yet he refused peace. This guy does it. I don't, I actually, I mean, I'm not trying to be in it. I think this guy's legitimately autistic. I don't think that he understands any social cues or something. I, I struggle to understand, I struggle to like truly understand this guy. What you're saying makes no fucking sense. Like, how do you not understand this thing? This is so, it's very basic. Like the game, I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe you need somebody to like sit with you and watch play games with you or something. I really don't get it. I don't. I don't really understand it. You can't have it both ways. And okay. so he doesn't trust Atreus off on his own because yeah, he's only a teenager. But Atreus sneaks off anyway to go try and make peace with Freya. And this whole plotline's fucking stupid. They killed her son. There's no fucking way Freya would ever team up with Kratos, but eventually they do convince her way later. Yeah, because it's a very complicated situation. That's why they were able to convince her later. Because they know, like, she, she understands that Baldur was trying to kill Kratos and Atreus, and that it was retaliation. It's, it's mentally complicated. And then I don't think that they end up teaming up. Uh, the only reason they do team up is to take down Odin. I, from what I remember, because she's like, I can't even get to him. And then Kratos like, no, I can figure out a way for you to get to him. What if we could do that? And she's like, okay, let's do it. I'm pretty sure that's how it went down. I don't remember the specifics. So it made sense. She didn't just instantly let it go. Okay. But for now, of course, she refuses and she almost kills Atreus. And I was absolutely rooting for her at this part. Do you well, she doesn't blame Atreus. So that's why she didn't kill him. But I think that she said that if you, she sees him again, she will kill him. Kill him. Do it. But no, she lets him go. 
And funny enough, I actually forgot what happened in the next couple hours of gameplay. I had to review my footage because I literally forgot why the crew then goes to Alfheim. It turns- To hide from Odin? Because you can't, like, get his reach there? Turns out it was to seek wisdom from Groa, the Keeper of Knowledge. I'm pretty sure a big part of it was that they were trying to also- they went to a place that Odin wasn't able to spy on, or at least they thought. <laughs> And eventually, after fighting your way through the now light elf- <laughs> Odin only wants peace. Meanwhile, the last game showed us the genocide of the giants. Yeah, right. I think Kratos was just using very basic context clues. Be like, I don't know if I could trust this guy. Yeah. Elf-dominated landscape, and guess what? The light elves are bad, too. Everyone's a bad guy in war. Who would have thought? Are the developers okay. trying to tell me that Ukraine aren't the- Oh my god, dude. I'm like, we're not even gonna get into this. Universal good guys who are gonna save the world and defeat <laughs> okay. those evil fascists in Russia. Incredible. This guy is, this guy has like actually political brain rot. I'm surprised that somebody hasn't tried to cancel Sony Santa Monica for this. After fighting your way to the end of the level, the gang discovers that the prophecy that Groa told Odin was a lie. And that Ragnarok would not be the end of all things, but only Asgard specifically. And Atreus now believes that he will be the champion that leads all these armies. Kratos obviously does not like the idea of this, again, now that he's a cartoonishly overprotective father. It's not cartoonish in any capacity. It makes perfect sense. He's seeing, like, literally, you brought it up before, Atreus struggles to manage his emotions. Now he has a fucking, he can transform into other animals, and he loses his sense of himself. Kratos' entire thing in the original God of War was that he would constantly kill and like kill people, kill gods, lose his anger, lose his temper, and have a negative impact. His wife is dead, and now he and like he knows the giants have a target on their back, and so he's very protective of his son because there's a target on his back. But then also. Um, because like he has, he's very similar to Kratos. It's not cartoonish. It's very normal. Like I, I how old is this synthetic man guy? I really don't understand how you don't get that. Um, I, I, I really don't understand how he doesn't get it. That's insane. And so the writers decided we don't have enough forced melodrama yet. So we get a kind of bizarre moment. But what if Loki going to Ironwood is the only way that. <gasps> oh, Atreus. My son. Right, he thinks that he's Loki, which I think he ends up being. But that's like Kratos is struggling with his son being that um, influential in the world because he he's been trying to stay out of influence of the world. He's projecting onto his kid. This is like normal emotion. And nothing more. Do you hear me? All of this makes sense. I'm hungry anymore? Go to your room. No dinner. My words were chosen carelessly. It should take his bow, too. Take his bow. He's grounded. Am I the only one who thinks Sindri is like a groomer or a pedophile? Oh my god, bro. You really are fucking brain rotted. What? What the hell are you talking about? What? Hell or something. Yes, you are the only person that thinks he's a groomer pedophile. This guy is a weirdo. You're a fucking weirdo, bro. Every single time Atreus is by himself, Sindri is also there as like a creepy, tiny old man. No, he's there as somebody to confide in them. They have like a like an uncle relationship. Why, why does everything have to be so weird to you, bro? Well, you're a weird fucking guy. What are you talking about? Encouraging all the strange whims that Atreus has against his father. Kind of I that it's it's not he's trying not trying to encourage him against his father. I think he's just trying to make him feel better and maybe he believes in some of the things that atreus wants to engage in uh, what and it reminds me of certain discord i mean if anything you want to okay if you want to contrast it like sin brock like sindri's brother is kind of more like kratos they kind of like they're kind of uh they're quiet uh fucking angry ass a lot maybe not quiet but like just angry dicks and then sindri and atreus are maybe a little bit more uh like it's similar in another capacity what the fuck are you talking about i can't even believe i'm even talking about this nobody thinks that you're weird communities and so now it trade like i find it so weird when people will look at somebody else and like, instantly assume that there's some kind of a pedophile predator like what like that to me like you're projecting bro like why do you see that every time you see something like you think it's fucking grooming like what are you hiding that's weird it starts thinking of ironwood which earlier Jorman gander told him about and he is transported into a magical pocket dimension. 
first he starts seeing visions of okay. the worst moment from the last game where as a small child he kills Thor's son in cold blood. Yeah, which is a significant moment because Kratos knows that killing a god is not good. It still pisses me off to this day that Kratos... <laughs> it's funny how he calls him a pedo, but thinks that the 12-year-old should have had a romantic scene. <laughs> That's true. Um, wait. How old is Kratos in God of War? He's 14 years old. Okay, so this guy had a huge... This is actually funny. This guy had like, one of the biggest criticisms that he had was he was upset that when... Atreus met Angerboda. He's like, how come he's not interested in her that way? Wink, wink. But now he's like, so I don't know what you're thinking about two 14 year olds in a weird way. But then when it comes to Sindri, you're like, um, he's giving me really creepy vibes. I don't know, man. Maybe that's you projecting. That is a weird, that is just very weird. You're, that's a very weird thing for you to be thinking. It's very bizarre. That was a great point, though. I didn't even think about that. You're a weird guy, dude. You're a weird guy. Kratos didn't beat his son immediately after that. It still pisses me off to this day that Kratos didn't beat his son immediately after that. Why would he beat his son after that? I don't understand. I could probably make a video just about the emasculation of Kratos in this game. Kratos wasn't emasculated. He's aging. Um... What are you talking about? It says that he's 14 in Ragnarok. Am I wrong about that? God of War Ragnarok, 14 years old. He's 14 in God of War Ragnarok. He was 11 in the first game. So, but what? But but we'll get into that more later. He's he's an aging man that's like gaining more wisdom and becoming less violent. That's like the whole part of the game. What are you talking about? What is this guy on about? Now that he's been shown the worst parts of himself, he wakes up inside of ironwood this magical forest being protected by giant magic and he meets our token black character for this game <laughs> it's okay oh, we knew he was gonna have a problem with the black character angraboda is a completely fucking pointless character she does she's a lore accurate character angraboda is like an actual like character from the mythology and she's like the only other titan left or a, a, a giant left so i think that like she's not really Worthless, but okay. There's nothing of relevance in the plot except give Loki a bag of marbles. She's like one of the other last ti giants, right? La what are you talking about? No relevance to the plot. She, <laughs> without her, the, like, what? What are you talking about? It represents like another side of Atreus. Like, basically his mother's side, which he's kind of torn between his father, you know, the father and mother. This is one of those tearings of it. What are you talking about? You cannot tell me with a straight face that this character wasn't added just for the sake of diversity. You Are know you, Do you have a you're a fucking idiot. It was. Bro, first of all, when I played through this game, I didn't even notice that she was black. I don't even care. Who cares? I don't know why you're thinking about this all the time. Second of all, like every other character in this, Odin, Thor, Atreus, they just look like other than the Kratos because Kratos was already a pre-established character. They just happen to look like their character, the the voice actor. This is what this is the fucking guy. This is Atreus. He looks like Atreus. This is Angraboda. She looks like it. So they use they they, they grab the voice actors and they said, like, oh, let's just make them look like them because it's easier to match the voice. Who cares if she's black? Who really gives a shit? They didn't make a point of it. They didn't say, guys, wait up, I gotta work because black people exist. Like uh, what? <laughs> Why of all cultures, of all mythologies, would Northern Europe, possibly the whitest place on Earth, have black characters? I'm pretty sure they even said in the mythology that she has, like, dark of skin. So, who, who gives a shit? Whatever, man. I think it really just came down to the voice actress was good, so they decided to make... They just decided to make the character black to look like the voice actress, like every other character in the game. Okay. There's well, it doesn't matter because I'm a- Oh, yeah, and they use motion capture for their animation, too, which makes sense. So, yeah, okay. Bigot for asking. I'm a racist for even noticing in the first place. No, you're. I mean, you're really racist because you don't think Jews are white. You're a weirdo that's like, you know, and then you're constantly- And he's, and he's constantly talking about the Great Replacement Theory. He talked about that in, in Assassin's Creed. Like, they're trying to replace white people in this, like, active way of destroying the white race. It's like a thing that he thinks very clearly. You know, like, yes, they are adding more, like more characters for inclusivity sake. And sometimes it gets annoying. But this guy actually thinks that there's like, like white people, like we're out to kill the whites. Like, that's what this guy 
like unironically thinks. Let's be absolutely real here. So yeah, I mean, it's weird. It, she wasn't bad. And it seems like the fact that you don't like that she's black is also having an impact on you liking the character. Because you're like, oh, she was worthless. What did she provide? She provided like the understanding of uh, of the of the giants and like another aspect of of, of Trace. She was a guiding character that was also like his age. What are you talking about? She she was necessary in the plot. What? And I couldn't even tell you the real answer if I wanted to. But well, you couldn't. You you. I mean, honestly, you fucking swinging and missing on every single lore point from the start. So <laughs> whatever. Because I'd be banned from YouTube. Incredible. It doesn't help that all of her dialogue sounds like modern dialect. It's usually not so lively around here. What do you you want her to have an accent? Like none of the characters have an accent. What? Guess I'm just lucky. Uh, you're just lucky. It's you were offended by that? What did you want her to fucking gangster rap for you? What are you talking about? None of the characters sound like they're from <laughs> like they're Norse, honestly. They just sound like themselves. What do you what did I, what? It's like if a redditor was transported back to It's weird that you're you're only concerned with this issue when it comes to her, but this has been something that they did constantly throughout the entire game. Like they don't have like a particular accent. It makes like who cares? They modernized some of the 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 conversation, some of the dialogue that upset you. I don't understand. Ancient Scandinavia. And Angraboda is not the only character that speaks in Newspeak. Mimir does it a none, none of them speak the way somebody would um, in the area where this mythology was created. None of them speak in like some kind of a Norse accent. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you... This is something that, you, that this is a consistent theme of the game. Why are you only complaining now? It doesn't make any sense. Unless you're kind of racist. And the only reason that you have an issue with it is because you need to have issues with this character. This might be it. I mean, we watched like three videos from this guy, so we're not like at a point where it's a it's a consideration if he's racist. Like he is. He, he's a fucking weirdo. He's like a weird basement dwelling redditor. It's bizarre as hell. And that's me saying it. I look like that, but I'm actually six foot four, guys. Okay, just so you know. <laughs> just be stupid. A lot as well, and it is incredibly distracting. No, it's not. See. Got nothing to like that part of the game because it's kind of long-winded and annoying so it's fine if you want to criticize that i have no issue with that but like it doesn't really get distracting at all what are you talking about what Jeez. And they say celestial theft is a victimless crime. oh mamir kind of talks like that right oh there we go not totally sure who what is. that combined what? with all the quips completely removes any tension from any scene in the game characters cannot what shut the fuck up Don't just stand there. Move. I love that's my favorite boss I think in the game right there Still in the way. stop Maybe another favorite I liked that fight though tell me what the fuck to do she's literally it sounds like you suck at this game bro and that the reason you get prompted so much is because you're terrible at the game really getting me killed <laughs> And it doesn't help that this is the worst part of the game by far. That part I can agree with. Like, yeah, it I, I it was for the first run through, it's not terrible. It could be worse. Um, uh, but it's probably the weakest part of the game. In general, playing as Atreus is kind of the weaker part of the game. In my opinion. That's fine. Like, you know, that's I don't think it's an unreasonable criticism. Um, it's not the character, it's not Kratos. You're used to playing as Kratos, so like, you're kind of designed for that. They do have similar fighting uh, strategies, but he doesn't feel as strong, which is a good thing, because if they made him feel as strong, then that would be distracting as well, no? Right? Because he's not supposed to be as strong. Uh, but yeah, sure, that's fine as a criticism, but... It's two straight fucking hours of not just Atreus's brain-dead gameplay, but walking in a straight line listening to a worthless character talk about things that don't matter it's literally she's talking about like their story what do you mean though that don't matter do not pull that you ugly fat fuck god damn it and worst of all it ends with you fighting angraboda's giant grandma <laughs> yeah okay who is stealing the souls of the animals in the forest because life is pointless this shit i don't even remember this but i guarantee you that this is not the actual story this guy is like swings and misses constantly when his interpretation of the story it comes out of fucking nowhere and it only exists to give angraboda a purpose in the story and anybody telling you this game is fucking mature just take one look at this boss battle and tell me with a straight face that this game is fucking mature this is i don't understand what you mean what makes it immature because a giant exists the giant existed in the first game as well. Like, they didn't show them, but they exist. Well, I don't understand. What did you expect the giantess to look like? A baby? Like a little, like a little goblin? Um, 
Okay, so just to be clear, I looked it up really quick. This guy's a fucking idiot. Uh, she, she's 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 she, uh, stealing animal souls because uh, I guess she's depressed. Okay, having become depressed and withdrawn from the world, she would begin using, and I remember this, using an enchanted cauldron to capture animals and harvest their souls, using them to live vicariously through their memories in a temporary bid to relieve her sorrows. Like, it makes sense. Like, her grandmother has using his magic basically as fucking drugs, but killing animals in some capacity. And they're like, hey, that's not good. Don't be killing don't be killing animals, Grandma. Right? Because it makes them sad. Especially since uh, uh, he has, like, a connection to animals, being that like, he turns into one. Okay? So, it makes kind of makes sense, I guess. I, I, it doesn't really... I, I didn't have any problem with the plot point. But, like, the way that he reduces everything down to, like, nothing, it shows, like, just real... I mean, it can be nothing other than intentional dishonesty. Like you're boiling down every plot point to like uh, like to the least honest interpretation of what it could actually be. It's so weird. Some baby game <laughs> shit. This is Kingdom Hearts level. Ooh, the giant voodoo black woman throws what the fuck magic out of her pot at you, and you've got to shoot the symbol to stop her. For, well, first of all, it's probably one of the most simple boss fights in the game, which makes sense because again. You're used to playing as Kratos, so if it's too complicated of a fight, it could be very difficult to do. Because again, you're used to playing as Kratos. Second of all, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm this guy's very confusing. And there's nothing about she does it because she's oppressed. Her son died. Okay, that makes sense too. This that is God of War. You and like all the giants die. Like well, most of them are dead. That's probably why she's oppressed. Don't kill her at the end. Also, you kill giants in all the original God of Wars. You every like almost every fight is a fucking giant. The first fight in God of War Two is a giant fucking animated um statue you kill giant characters all the time in the old god of wars those games were mature no this is like a common theme <coughs> you're fighting gods some of them are going to be fucking huge what are you talking about what this is a common theme in all the god of war games you fight Ares as a giant in the first god of war at the end of the first god of war <laughs> you <laughs> you climb chronos it's the third god of war you fight a bunch of massively giant gods what are you talking about? You don't even like maim her in some way. Well, you're not trying to kill her. What? No, there's just some weird message about how Angraboda will always be in Atreus's shadow, just a minor character in his story. Kind of big. Well, yeah, because she has her own aspirations and she wants to like save the giants, but like he's kind of doing his own thing and she feels like maybe he doesn't take her as seriously. That's from what I remember. This is simultaneously both hilarious and extremely cringe. If you oh, didn't okay. cringe at this, you are woke beyond any recovery. This guy is so weird. This guy is so anti-woke. He's like weird as hell. He's he's thinking everything is so woke. That's his entire filter for life. Is this, is this woke? I'm not thinking about that. The story was good. What the hell are you talking about? There is what what is your life like, dude? Like what are your what do you and your friends talk about? Do you have friends? I'm not even trying to be an asshole, but like what do you guys talk about on a day to day basis? <clears throat> Because, like, this is insane. I could not... I feel like anything this guy watches, it turns into black, white, woke, this... Dude, it's a... Fu like, holy shit. It's just... Like, you're obsessed. You're obsessed with, like, fucking race and shit. You're the same thing as, like, blue-haired, you know, non-binary people on Twitter. But in the opposite direction. Like, you're just as obnoxious. This is fucking insane, brother. All right, can we go? No hope for you. This is awful, and okay. you know it. The game was great. And you just okay. can't admit it because you don't want to be called racist. It I make edgy racist jokes all the time on my Instagram. <laughs> I do not care if people think I'm racist. So that's obviously not true. Let's be real. I make some fucking. I make some pretty edgy jokes. Like I, and I, and you know what? The black people love me still. They still love me. I love them too, brother. All of the. <laughs> But like I, I do not care about people being like, "Oh, you're too," oh my goodness, oh they're gonna cancel you. I don't care if people like I don't give a shit. So like obviously this is not this is just him desperately trying to make it seem like only fucking people that are super sensitive to particular issues would would like this game because they feel like they're gonna get canceled. This game was phenomenal. This game was phenomenal. What are you talking about? It's that simple. Okay. <laughs> What a tonal whiplash after that emotional scene. It's like we're not allowed to feel sad for more than two seconds. Then this horrific what? section of the game ends with Angra Boda making Atreus <laughs> promise her that he would tell nobody about this place, not even his father. Yeah, because she doesn't want it to be vulnerable to being attacked because, you know, her people were genocided, although they were kept inside of those marbles, but... 
What purpose does this serve to the story? Uh, I don't know, maybe what I just said. Anybody would understand that if they actually played the fucking game. What? Nothing but more emotional conflict. What are you talking about? They're literally in hiding from being eradicated. Odin killed, like, all, like all of them in the first fucking, or before the first fucking game. What are you talking about? Uh, why would he do that? Why would she say that? Uh, because the game needs a conflict. What are you, what the fuck are you talking about, dog? This guy's weird. Dude, there's no way that you don't understand this stuff. You have to be dumb. There's no way, dude. This guy's, this guy, why does this guy do any level of analysis on anything? Like, we're not even at a, in a spot where it's like, oh, I kind of disagree. He's just not getting anything. He doesn't even understand. He's not saying, oh, I felt like this was stupid. I know the reason why, but I felt like it was stupid. He's just saying, it doesn't serve any purpose. Yeah, what? What are you talking about, dude? What the fuck? What would have happened if Kratos was told about Ironwood? Nothing. The potential that somebody else could find out. And guess what? <gasps> Tyr was actually Thor, so if, they, if, he, if he says it, he might find out too. She's just she's being overly safe. Of course. Like, who would have fucking thought, right? What the hell? It's crazy. In fact, it would be a net positive for the story, because then we wouldn't get more fucking waste of time, shitty, emotional bait cutscene bullshit. So Atreus wakes up inside his house on Midgard instead of back at Sindri's place, but Kratos quickly finds him and confronts him where he's been. Atreus dodges the question and implies that Kratos <laughs> needs protecting, not him. Are okay. they completely retconning the end of the first game? We already saw the prophecy where Kratos dies during Ragnarok that was lit. What do you mean retconning? That's why he's saying if anybody needs protection, it's you, Dad, because you die in the prophecy. What? Literally the last thing that happened at the end of the first game. Well, so What are you talk? What the fuck is he talking about? Suddenly the first game fate cuts I have to rewatch this. So Atreus wakes up inside his house on Midgard instead of back at Sindri's place. Okay. But Kratos quickly finds him and confronts him where he's been. Atreus dodges the question and implies that Kratos needs protecting. Not yeah, right, because we saw the prophecy in the last game where he dies. Not him. Are they completely retconning the end of the first game? We are. Uh, there's no way this this guy is this stupid, right? We already saw the prophecy where Kratos dies during Ragnarok. That but that would that would make him want to protect him more, no? It was literally the last thing that happened at the end of the first game. Well, suddenly a Valkyrie shows up, and it's a pretty good boss battle. But it turns out it was Freya, as Freya is the real queen of the... And then I remember, I, I believe that uh, Kratos goes on about how he doesn't care if he dies. Valkyries, not Seagrin. It wasn't enough that she's a super powerful mage who could revive a massive giant. No, she's also a combat expert on par with Kratos as she nearly kills him despite the fact we win the boss battle, we effectively lose. Kratos nearly gets killed by Odin's crackhead ex-wife. She's a literal god, but okay. You can't make this shit up. And again, it's very consistent that he does not want to kill another god, so... Okay, he's been holding back the whole game. Like, literally, the beginning of the game, um, when he's fighting Thor, is Thor like, you're holding back, stop holding back, and Kratos goes in a little bit and injures him, but he doesn't fully open up. Like, that's a whole big point of the game. The Norns explain prophecies aren't guaranteed, they are just highly predicted outcomes. Yeah, sure, but still, like, it makes sense that... Um, it makes sense that uh, Atreus would be worried for his father, and then, like, Kratos just doesn't care. Fuck this feminist bullshit, dude. I'm so- She's a fucking god. Is What? I'm so tired of this. What are you talking about? They're gods. They're not regular people. Why? Every <laughs> He's so weird. He's such a weird person. Everything is feminism. It's crazy. He stops fighting back when he realizes it's Freya. Yeah. Everyone complained about that purple haired chick from The Last Jedi. That's because those movies were fucking dog shit and the stories were terrible. That scene was kind of cool when she flew that ship, the hyperspeed through other ships. But that was like a terrible movie. This is a great game. Yeah, I haven't heard a fucking peep about Freya, and it's just as bad. Actually no, it's not. It's not even close to as bad. Freya's a fucking a goddess, and like we, it is, it's still established that she could not be Kratos. That is the implication that like the audience gets. <laughs> Because he's constantly holding back when it comes to her. Actually, in some ways, is kind of worse because she's way more present in the story from this point forward. 
Oh, but okay. instead of killing Kratos, she decides to set a temporary truce as the two work together to break the curse that prevents her from traveling between the realms. Yes, that was implemented by Odin. So you travel to Vanaheim, which is like the jungle realm, I guess. And there you meet- That's where I believe she's originally from. Meet the Diversity Squad Avengers. What? And none of them, except Freya's brother, get any kind of development whatsoever. Bro, I, I just don't- I don't know how you watch things. The Diversity Squad? Why is this something that, like, is resonating with you? But first of all, they're on a different, like, realm, so them looking different, who cares? Second of all, what are you talking- How do you consume media? It's so weird, man. Like, I really- I can't imagine what it's like to be you. I really have no really idea can't. why they even exist. Maybe they're the writer's self-insert characters, but it was certainly distracting. Another major issue with this level is that throughout the entire thing, Kratos tries to convince Freya that he's not her enemy, and he's sorry for what he did, and she needs to move on. Yeah, and then he talks about how he lost his wife, and his old, his, his previous wife and daughter, and how that fucked him up mentally for a very long time. Because she's like, you would never understand what it's like to lose a child. And he's like, yes, I do. And like, there's a lot, there's a lot of emotional building. It's productive emotional building that happens in this. So... And he also tells her about his own family that he was tricked into killing. I've already explained how this would never happen, and it's pretty- What do you mean you've explained how it would never happen? What are you talking about? Clear that the only reason it does happen is because the writers didn't want Kratos to kill their strong female character. I, I mean, I don't know how many times I have to say it. He specifically doesn't want to kill any more gods. Because every time a god dies, something bad happens. That's literally, like, that is his entire experience. It is a huge point of everything. What? Why do you keep talking about how everything is feminism? They explain all these things away perfectly reasonably. And he also feels bad for killing him in the first place. What? This guy just doesn't understand anything he consumes. It's actually fucking insane. But what makes it worse is that throughout the entire thing, Kratos is constantly apologizing and capitulating to everything Frey is saying, and he admits he basically wouldn't even defend himself against her if she tried to kill him again. Because he underst- like, he literally has a son that he loves and he understands, like, her wrath because he can empathize as a father. <laughs> what the fuck? These are so basic. There's no way. This guy didn't even play this game, I feel like. There's no way. Because he came into this wanting to have a, a problem with this game. He, this guy is like very, this guy's very force contrarian. Holy fuck. Like the gameplay stuff was fine. His criticisms, even though he just sucks at games. So I don't know why he's really getting criticizing gameplay. But like this stuff is just crying. Like he doesn't, he doesn't understand fundamentals. The first thing he complained about was that two 12 year olds weren't having sex. His first complaint is that two 12-year-olds weren't having sex. Like, that is, like, unironically the first thing he complained about as part of his story complaint. So... Because he couldn't bear to kill his friend. How the fuck is this Kratos, dude? This is... I mean, she saved... I'm pretty sure she saved Atreus' life in the in the uh, last game, too. You think maybe that has something to do with it as well? Like, <laughs> maybe she's he's eternally grateful to her for, you know, not for saving his kid. Maybe you think that maybe there's a factor there? I wouldn't doubt it, to be honest with you. I think it's pretty strong, uh, it's pretty strong logic on that one. This is such character assassination, you can't con- No, it's not. It's a character shift, and it's done very well on Kratos. What are you talking about? Convince me for even a second. Because you never played the games, and you, like, you're not, you're an immature person that doesn't understand or identify with anything that you're, like, consuming. What are you talking about? It's the same person that was in the original games. Does anyone remember- No, it's not. That's the whole entire point of this whole- of, of these games. It's a maturing Kratos. He's not the same person anymore. That's the whole point. <laughs> That's the whole fucking point. It's like you intentionally don't get it. For the time that Kratos crushed a woman under a fucking lever to hold a door open. Yeah, he's changed. What? Open a completely innocent woman. Yeah. He feels bad. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> This guy, this like, this is the pro This guy is just an edgy gamer that just wants everybody to like die. He's very, he's a weird guy. He's just a weird person. I mean, I appreciated Kratos' growth. If you didn't, it's just not the game for you. Maybe you should stick to other kids' games or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, God of War had a good story, but like, obviously, you didn't identify with the story. You identified with the edginess of it. Like, you're, like, that's it. Okay, cool. Go! <laughs> 
Honestly, just making Kratos a mature, wise old man was a horrible idea. Why? It was. I, I feel like everybody liked that storyline. I thought it was fantastic. In the first place, Why? there's no way they could ever pull it off in a realistic way. They did. It was phenomenal. These games are praised by, like, everybody. What do you mean? What? Way. So anyway, you fight your way through. You make your way to the World Tree Roots. And Neath Hogue, the guardian of Yggdrasil, shows up. And you just straight up kill her. Are there any lasting consequences of killing the guardian of the World Tree? Of course not. And I, I don't remember if there is. This guy's just not a reliable narrator. So, like, you can't say take anything that he says is with, like, anything. I'm not going to count a side quest where you have to find her children. Because it's completely optional. Now Freya is free to wander the realms and her human... I could have swore that that was being used as a protection to stop Freya from being able to, like, use whatever power she had. So they had to kill that. What? Form, and we get a scene straight out of a soap opera when she reunites with her brother. It's pushing the, the message. Family set me on fire. What? What's the message? What? Do you expect me to react? Like my brother. What's the message? Like the boy that used to have my back no matter what. And who I always supported no matter how selfish his choices. What's the message? Family values that you're criticizing? I don't understand. I expected you to come to find me. That no matter how hurt or angry, you wouldn't abandon me. I don't know what point he's trying. I think he's trying. I think he thinks he's making a point here. I don't know what the point is. Kratos used to kill people. And then he upset the entire balance of like Greek mythology. What? <laughs> It was to force Freya to be a prisoner in the same realm as Odin because Odin is a manipulator. Yeah, sure. Freya, please. I hate every character. If it was possible to hate every character, I think I hate every character. God damn, I'm getting sick of this shit. All right, I'm going to try and wrap this up as quickly as possible. This I don't he hasn't made a single good point in this entire video. This is fucking wild. Like when it comes to the story, this is actually almost impressive. Once they return to Sindri's place, Kratos finally confronts his son in another infuriating scene. The truth is you're being a complete asshole. Laddie, you know that's no way to change a man's mind. He doesn't have any faith in me. It's fine if he keeps Just secrets. slap your it's son. Fine if fucking Kratos slap him. Her secret's hard to be stuck with this guy. Oh, okay. The pussy ass writers. Why like, why aren't you watching? You're not even listening to the story. You're whinging about it because you want him to beat his kid. You're a weirdo. Do you know how many dads would fucking bitch slap their sons if they spoke to him right there? I mean, what a weird point to make. It's always like the weakest men who have the weakest perspectives. What a weak thing to say. Like, why would it be a positive thing? For you to beat your own kid, like what are you like the 1950s? Why would you hit your kid out of for defying you? And it's not even—it's not like he's hitting his dad. Like what the fuck? Why was that even a thought in your head? So then, a who, who resonates with this guy? Like an emotionally unstable person. That's like like a little like I mean he's a little guy. That's what it comes down to. He has like little guy privilege. He's like a little weak boy that pretends to be a man, and so like he doesn't understand that he could be actually like dangerous. What are you talking about? Like, I know what it's like to be like a man that's gotten angry before. I've never hit, I've never, well, I've, well, I've hit people before. When I was a kid, I used to get in a lot of fights. I've never hit somebody, but like, I don't understand. Why does that story not resonate with you? I feel like if your story with Kratos doesn't resonate, if you don't resonate with it, I mean, that's fine. But it's, to me, it communicates that you're not like, you're not a man. I don't know what to tell you. Kratos is like the super aggressive, dangerous person that's trying to be a better person and raise his kid the right way without having his kid go through his mistakes. What? Freyus, being a spoiled brat teenage boy, does exactly what his dad doesn't want him to do and go- Atreus is part of a prophecy and feels a sense of like self-importance and like a sense of a quest and he's, his dad is trying to stop that from happening. And it's understandable why Kratos would want to stop that because he doesn't want his son to be important because he wants his son to have like a calm life that's not full of constant danger like his life. So it's two characters with two different perspectives and you're supposed to feel bad for both of them and empathize with both of them. But ultimately like Atreus needs to go through this quest. It's very basic stuff. Goes to see Odin, but first we need to climb this massive wall to get inside. Well, it's just another generic linear section with no hard battles whatsoever. Okay. Very lame. It's climbing. Compared to traversing through Pandora's Temple in God of War 1, just to name one example of the uh, okay. many cool things Kratos did. 
And once he makes it to the top, we finally meet Heimdall, probably the only based character in the game. Think you could pull me up or... <sighs> no, I don't think I will. I am profoundly unimpressed. Well, I suppose I should expect nothing less from half-breeds. Don't call me a half -breed. And what are you going to do exactly? I mean, he was a good bad guy character. So, but it's weird that you, you, you just, what do you like him for? Because he hits people. <laughs> like, what a fucking weirdo. He was a good character. But what, this guy's, okay, cool stuff, man. That's great. Uh, you toddlers are boring. Oh, no, no, no. You are going to spare me out of pity! You do not get to decide my fate! What in- Hold on a second. Is that- Voice actor. Who is that? Oh, I don't think it is. It sounds it sounds almost like the guy uh, the guy from It's Always Sunny. Oh, it's not quite him. Okay. I was like, damn, is that him? Nah, it's not, unfortunately. That'd be fuck crazy. An absolute Sigma male. And once again our expectations and are fucking, subverted. And then he gets fucking killed. <laughs> As Asgard is just a generic Viking village straight out of Skyrim. I mean, I just don't. I wonder, like, do you under, like, if you looked at like war stuff before? Like, I like Viking stuff; it's interesting. What, what else would it be? I guess. What do you expect? It's where when when warriors die, they go there to like celebrate. That's what it is. What else would it be, really? I guess what it, what it, what it seems like this is the kind of person that's only impressed by like flat like very flashy things, like he has no appreciation for potential simplicity and which which tracks is his person. Everything needs to be very in your face, very aggressive and very like oh, like flashy. It needs it, it needs to be key jingles in front of his face. He needs to have jingling keys in front of him for him to like appreciate something. Um, that's really what it boils down to. This is perfectly fine. I had, like I thought it was fine. Like it looked nice. I don't even know what to say. Okay. Honestly, I wasn't even surprised anymore at this point. What? But just compare Mount Olympus to this shit. After okay. Heimdall makes a mockery of Atreus in an unwinnable boss fight, Odin takes Atreus under his tutelage anyway. That's what he wanted to do from the start. He stopped him from killing Atreus. He wanted Atreus on his side to help him. I think find like fucking the mask and gives him a quest to find all the pieces of this mask that will allow him to see... And I think he might be the only person that could do it, because he's one of the last giants. ...into this realm tear that somehow might have all the secrets to the universe or something. Guess what? We never get to see what's in it. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> Why does that matter? Because he fails his quest because he's defeated. Even more pointless subversion. All this does is blue ball the player. I mean... Not really. I wasn't like, oh my god, I can't wait to see what's in it. The tone that's set for that is more of like, oh, it's probably not good if you see that because, you know, I don't know if you know, he's, this is the bad guy. <laughs> I don't know if you know, he's the bad guy in this show, this story. Really? You set up this huge thing that the villain's trying to accomplish, and we don't even know if it's actually important or not. We know it's important because he is so obsessed. It's not about what it is. It's about his relationship with it. He is so obsessed. He kills his own son. He's so obsessed with this plan coming to fruition. He kills his own son. That's the point of the entire thing. That's the that's that's the necessary aspect of it. Maybe it does has have answers. Maybe it would have killed him. We don't know. We don't need to know because it's not about what it is explicitly. It's about the motivation it provides for Odin. That's what it shows us. He kills his own son. He kills his own son. Because he finds this to be more important than his own family. Meanwhile, Thor, as flawed as he is, loves his children. It's very, it's very, uh, it's communicated from the start in his own way. And so does Kratos. Like, that's the whole thing. And But Odin is so obsessed. He's like such a bad person. That's what it comes down to. What? 
And during the- I mean, your best uh, your best criticism is that like fucking when Thor's kids die, they don't go back to Asgard. <laughs> this entire segment, Atreus is emasculated by multiple characters, not just Thor, who's obviously much bigger and stronger. Emasculated? What? Th obviously, yeah, like you said, the Thor, he's not being emasculated by Thor. Thor is literally a stronger than him. He's what? But Thor's daughter, Thrude, also is bigger and stronger than him. Who cares? She's like a fucking full-blooded god viking. Of course she's going to be fucking bigger. Like, Vikings were bigger than people in general, even the women. Women Vikings used to fight against, like, against, like, men in other countries where they would invade. They're, they're, what? In Sif, even though she does literally nothing, is also much bigger than him. So Atreus just looks... He's a fucking 14-year-old! He's, no, he's 12. He's 12! Or no, he's 14. He's 14. What are you talking about? What? He's small and weak. And I think they were trying to go for sort of a Peter Parker underdog type of thing, but I just don't like Atreus at all. He's a 14-year-old. What are you? I'm so confused. And this made him feel even more pathetic. He didn't feel pathetic at all. You're going through like his growth spurt, like when when uh, Kratos stopped calling him boy and started calling him Atreus. That's a significant moment that's communicated to people. What? So as Atreus and Thor team up to find one of the mask pieces. Atreus slips away and finds Angraboda again. And they didn't, they, by the way, he's gonna, they didn't have sex. The 14 year olds didn't fuck. I hope that's not upsetting to you. And they watch a prophecy which tells them of Surtur and his waifu, who are both giants, and they combine to become Ragnarok, which is pretty obvious foreshadowing for later. Shortly after, pretty sure that's the actual story, but afterward, Thor and Atreus find the mask. He was also sick until he learned he was a god. He had, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That actually might be a thing, too. He might have had stunted development. Yeah, that was like a whole thing. Didn't he get sick? That's like that was the whole plot. Was well, that the whole plot? That was a big part of the first game was that he got sick and then uh, Freya had to cure him. And we're back to playing as Kratos again, and he finally takes agency in the plot. The only time this entire game that he makes a decision for himself. To go seek out the Norns, who are the fates of the Norse dimension. After fighting your way through quite a lot of enemies on Midgard. Yeah, I mean, again, his motivations make sense. Right? Kratos and Freya ride on a Kelpie to the bottom of some lake and find the Norns, who are also very cringe characters. I thought this was a great scene. They estimate that like they have like an estimation on like everything that they're going to say and do, and they don't see the future, but they they look at people as so predictable that they know what they're going to do and what they're going to say in response to what is happening. And then like now it's like Kratos is contending uh, with basically prophecy, but he's done it before, so it's like you know we're doubt is put into us. We're like this is the guy who literally kills like the the, the the three fates from Greek mythology, so. The ghost of Sparta furrows his brow menacingly. He resists the urge to grunt. Oh, he fails. And they tell us that fate is- And that actually is a little bit moment there, because he said you resist the urge to grunt, and then he grunts. So if anything, that's a little foreboding that prophecies can be changed in this. It's not real. People do have free choice. They just very rarely tell us that fate is not real. People do have free choice, they just very rarely make a decision that they can't predict. This might be the only metaphor in this story that I actually agree with. But this quest uh, was guess. not for nothing, as Kratos does learn that Heimdall plans to kill his son. And so, to kill Heimdall, he's going to have to forge a new weapon in Svartalfheim. Again, he doesn't want to kill Heimdall, but he wants to fight him successfully and hopes that he doesn't have to kill him, but he's willing to do whatever he needs to do. An infinitely duplicating spear. And even though I think the weapon's awesome, the actual quest to get it was incredibly lame. This felt like padding once again. I, I don't remember feeling that. I do remember that the story aspect of it was fantastic, especially when you find out that like Brock is missing part of his soul because he died and Sindri didn't want to be without him, so he went and tried to uh, retrieve the rest of him. But they say in the first, in this game, the beginning of it, that there are like four parts to everybody's soul. I don't remember the four parts, but... You don't even fight a cool boss in Svartalfheim. All you do is make your way to some lake, give the mermaid the ring, and she makes the weapon. That's literally it. Yet another missed opportunity from this game to do something. Yeah, they have form, mind, direction, and luck. And I think that Brock is missing um, direction. I don't remember that specifically. Something really cool. For all the parallels to Marvel movies that you're about to see in a second, I'm surprised they didn't just rip off of Infinity War here and what? make something over the top. 
Then Kratos and Odin have a verbal confrontation. Once again, the old Kratos would never talk to Zeus. He would just try and kill him as soon as he saw him. And this scene... Okay, so he's changing as a person, but okay. Scene was just painful to watch. I feel like the game can't decide whether or not Kratos wants war. He refused peace. And he didn't refuse peace. This guy just is a fucking idiot. He doesn't trust Odin because he trusts Mimir. Odin was the one who killed all the giants, and he wants to let his son go on a quest. Like this guy just doesn't under like the problem is is he doesn't even understand the basics of the story. So he like he's never going to give us an accurate anything. At the beginning of the game, yet we're constantly told he wants to avoid bloodshed. Yes, that's why he's not trying to kill people. Doesn't want to kill anybody except Odin. Which he doesn't even want to kill Odin. He just... <laughs> what? Which is pretty much impossible. That's just... Well, he does that. Okay. Stupid and naive <laughs> to believe that would even happen. Not to mention, huh? Odin straight up calls him a cuck in this scene, dude. That boy of ours is everything I expected. So clever, kind. Be sure he's yours. And the right. I don't think he's calling him a cuck. He's saying that he's stupid. But okay. Writers obviously didn't play the old games. I know they did the research on some of these stories, or a different writer entirely wrote the stories while you're riding on the sled or in the boats that reference the previous games. But they clearly forgot that in God of War 2, Kratos did have worshippers. Spartans worshipped him while he was a god, and yet he says nothing here, acting like Odin was correct. What? So what? What does that matter? Kratos has, doesn't feel like Kratos doesn't ever feel the need to explain himself. He's gonna go. Oh, I well, yeah, well, I have worship worshippers actually. What, what, does that sound like Kratos to you? But Odin's trying to provoke him. Yeah, and Kratos is not taking the bait. He's always been a man of few words. What? What do you even know of Godhood? In your lifetimes, has anyone? ever worshipped you and yet more evidence that the why does he need to answer the question why does he need to pick up on the provoking it sounds like you would be provoked by that because you have an ego problem <laughs> and you feel like you yeah, yeah actually I'm, I'm pretty cool actually he doesn't need to say he doesn't need to prove himself what the fuck is that is it he doesn't need to prove himself that's the whole point the writers emasculated kratos he never tries to kill odin here even if it wasn't out of rage which it would be he doesn't want to kill gods he doesn't want something fucking crazy to happen but okay we've said it like a thousand times if, if he killed odin the plot would be over and he would win he wouldn't be i mean i <laughs> he would have i might have lost but okay i'm not saying he should win here but he should Maybe for the two dollars for michael fam a god of gut never mind Never mind, man. This video is hypersensitive, too. Dude, this video is fucking crazy. It's actually impressively bad. At least try to kill Odin. He shouldn't just fucking stand there and get roasted and say nothing in return. Come Odin's trying to provoke him. Come the fuck on. And then when he returns... And now there's an additional dynamic where, like, Atreus trusts Odin. Which is probably another... Like, he, like I mean, I imagine that could be a part of the factor as well. To sin and Kratos doesn't care about being worshipped. Yeah, true. Andre's place again. He cries. Yes, Kratos pretty much cries. I don't think we see a tear leave his eyes, but come on, look at this. Uh, it sounds like he's reminiscing on either his son or his do his his wife that he loved. <laughs> what a bad guy for getting emotional. Oh fuck. And then he has a vision of his wife. Yeah, he he loved his wife. He likes he, he clearly loves his second wife more than his first wife. He loved her a lot. I can I can identify with that. I can appreciate that. It was as a man who's been like softened by his wife. I can appreciate that. I think it's a beautiful thing. That's why there's so many different things to like identify with from like Kratos' perspective. He's a, he's an aging man that's becoming like more empathetic as time goes on. It's not gay to cry over your fucking wife that's dead that you love. It's a very normal thing to do. This is and he never even got to grieve her and I would say any true capacity because he always had his son. So he didn't get like super emotional with her. Not that he would necessarily, you know, grieve uh, super emotionally. I'm just saying. What? Is actually the second vision. I didn't name the previous one because honestly, none of the three visions matter at all. They're you know what's crazy? She also looks like her voice actors. Completely pointless. There's only one purpose they serve to the story. Kratos settled. The ultimate Giga Chad settled. Prove what? me wrong. I actually think it was the girl from True Blood, Jessica. <laughs> you remember that? It's crazy. You could you could almost tell because. They look the same. One, because honestly, none of the three visions matter at all. They're completely pointless.
I mean, they're to just establish Kratos loved his wife and he was emotional about it, I guess? I don't know what- There's only one purpose they serve to the story. Kratos settled. What? I don't- I really don't understand that. I guess because this guy likes fucking- they like to think about 12 year olds having sex that he doesn't think like a grown woman is attractive enough? I don't really get it. Ultimate Giga Chad settled. Okay. Prove me wrong. You can't. Prove me- what? I don't- I just don't even understand. Is she not attractive to you? I'm very confused. Now we play as a tra- I'm very confused. I don't get it. Who should he have been with? He settled on a god? A goddess, I guess, but a god? Like, what's- <laughs> This is fucking crazy. You're a crazy guy. You're a kooky- You're a kooky dude. Oh, yes, again, and he makes his way to Helheim to find the next piece. And spoilers, okay. the piece isn't there, and no, they don't explain it either. Someone told me that Atreus was lying, but if he was lying, why would the mask be glowing when he's going in the supposed right direction? Was he manipulating it? He seemed rather confused when it wasn't there, and freeing Garm, the giant wolf there, which can tear through dimensions, that seemed to be unintentional, so how could it be a lie? Let's be- I- dude, I don't even remember this. Wasn't the- didn't the- wasn't that something to do with being- with the dog? Um... Where was the last piece? I'm, I don't even remember. This guy's just not an accurate narrator, and I don't want to speak without, like, remembering. To be honest, it's just more contrived bullshit. I doubt it. I just, I, there's like, I just know you're wrong. <laughs> I just don't know, remember why. So Heimdall, fittingly, shits all over him for fucking everything up. So Atreus runs home to Daddy. And honestly, him hugging his dad is one of the only decent moments of the story, so I won't shit on it. So it's up to Kratos. Oh. Kratos and Atreus to team up to- I don't remember the, the last part. ...to imprison Garm once again. You get a pretty cool boss battle, and then at the end, our expectations are unsubverted? As it turns out, Atreus trapped Fenrir's soul, and now releases it- Well, yeah, we knew that he went into the knife. We kind of, like, saw it happen. We just wasn't very explicitly told us. Into Garm. Oh, wasn't the wolf blocking the path in Atreus? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm who now becomes Frenrur, right? So now there's a giant- Frenrur? Okay. Heckin' Pupperino. How very cute. Okay. Then we get a scene where Kratos finally accepts his son is a big boy and can take care of himself. At first I was annoyed with this scene because Atreus was coming- Why? This was the whole- this was like the- This was like a big part of the story the whole time is his son getting older. And like maturing and him trying to like let go of his overprotective nature. What? Cross is pretty condescending to his father, but obviously that wasn't really the intention of the writing here. So while it was somewhat sloppily handled, and I really don't What came off as condescending? I'd love I'd love to hear it. I don't like the message of be better, especially the implications in the story that you should never kill your enemies, right? All your enemies can be forgiven, even though this is not something anybody actually follows in real life. I... Is, was that... I don't even know if that was actually true. I think he doesn't like to kill gods because bad things happen. That's what I remember. Try and find a leftist who doesn't think a conservative is a Nazi. Good fucking luck. And they're okay. certainly not looking to forgive him anytime soon, but once again, at least I felt something here. It's obvious that this version of Kratos is very lonely and doesn't want to let go of his son. But Atreus is a big boy now, even though I think he's only 13, so he's really not that much of a big boy. This is one of many moments in the story that you okay. can tell a lot of elements of this game were rushed, and it was clearly supposed to be a trilogy. What? What are you talking about? What was rushed? We're getting major story development points all crammed into this massive 25 hour experience. That what are you- what the hell is this guy talking about? A lot of elements feel underdeveloped. What? What? What the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> I'm so confused, dude. Like, remember in the beginning of the story when Atreus was supposed to learn to control his emotions so he could utilize his animal forms? Yeah, well that only really comes up right at the end of the game. I'm pretty sure he's been doing that like when you go when you go to whatever fucking giant world there was like that's one of the things he was doing was trying to control he by the end of that he learned to control it because he freely transforms into a fucking dog without losing his emotions no is that not then they go for a, 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 the old run she rides the back of another dog or something and then they go for a run and he learns to control it i could swear that's what happens there what the fuck is this guy talking about 
<laughs> he's just making things up. I, I don't think he ever pays attention to anything that he engages with. And he just kind of does it. But once again, what the fuck are you talking about? Again, I'm stretching out this review far beyond what it ever needed to be in the first place. So let's get back to it. So when we return to sin, I mean, he's had the consistent anger problem since he killed fucking Thor's kid. Like, I don't under, I, this is crazy. Andre's house yet again, the gang decides we're not going to kill Heimdall after all. And instead we're going to try and help the people of Vanaheim. Yeah. Because again, I don't know if you know this, Kratos doesn't want to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to kill gods because bad things happen. This has been consistent. Getting that spear was to fight him and actually be able to win because um, he has the ability of like foresight. So it's going to be difficult to do without that. That's the whole point of that. Who are being attacked by Odin's forces. So we once again return there. And once we arrive at Freyr's camp, we find out that the boar that you kill in the beginning of the first game didn't die and is in fact a random black guy. I'm not. I don't remember. Not making this shit up. Oh, so it was like another god character that trans. I don't remember that. It does not matter. Uh, is another god character that transforms? Like, who would have thought that it could be a thing? What is the point of this character? Someone tell me I why this character exists. I don't even remember what the fuck is. It's probably a, it's probably a lore character that they had to that they wanted to honor in there in some capacity. It's probably about as simple as it is. I, I don't remember, but you can't. So after meeting some more heckin' pupperinos and gaining the ability to manipulate- You mean the sun and the moon? <laughs> I'm pretty sure, aren't those like the sun and the moon that he's talking about? The sun and moon, we encounter Heimdall once again. And even though I said earlier it's probably my favorite boss fight in the game, it is kind of dumb when you think about it. Why? His ability is to read people's minds, right? So the gimmick of the boss is- Does he read people's minds? Um, I don't think that's right. I could have swore it was foresight. He can't, I don't think he can read anybody's mind. Is that true? Able to see a person's next moves and intent at any given time, even to the point of being able to read another person's mind. And thought. Is that real? I feel like that's not true. Um, maybe that's true. He has foresight. In order to warn the other Aesir of coming threats, he bore great war. Okay, which one? Okay. You think he can? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe that's on me. You have to use the spear and detonate it on the ground to be able to hit him. But if he can read your mind, why doesn't he know when you're about to detonate the spears and simply just jump out of the way of the ones on the ground? I don't even know if that's true, though. I'm pretty sure it's just he has, like, incredibly keen senses. Is he a mind reader? Maybe because he know. has to meet you directly Maybe in the eyes, is. and so he can't also watch the spears on the ground. But if that's the case, why can't you use any other method of ranged attack to hit him? I think it's just because it's a game. Like maybe when you call the axe back to you, it hits him in the back of the head or something? In any case... It was explicitly mentioned. Okay. Really? Eventually you do kill him, and it's very unsatisfying. I was hoping Kratos why? would crush his skull into the dust. Kind of like how he pulverized Hercules. He's not, he doesn't want to kill him. That's the whole thing. He doesn't want to kill him. So him, I think, I don't even think he kills him. Like he ends up killing him because he has to, because he says he's never going to stop like hunting his son. So this whole, this whole, I don't know. This, this guy's just like, he's obsessed with violence. It's weird. <laughs> Let me see this. Knock him off. Like it or not, he's all father's guest. But I thought I smelled something. Take one more step, you're not gonna like how this ends. Really? Brock says the point of the spear is it detonates his ability or deteriorates his ability. Oh, okay, so the spear has some kind of connection to deteriorating his ability. Gotcha. And how do you intend to stop me? Look into my eyes. You tell me. You are a sick man. I mean, that doesn't prove that he reads minds, but I don't really think it matters that much. Let's just continue. Achilles' face in God of War 3, but no, they pussy- I mean, if, he, if he's just like those, like, uh, seers that we saw, the, the, which I'm assuming is what his actual power is to be like those seers, then 
you would have like the ability to predict what people would do, but I could just be wrong. Be out on any kind of disturbing gore. And so the- We're talking about his face is completely red, like all the blood vessels popped in his head. It's weird, like, it's weird that this guy just needs explicit violence and he, it, I don't know, this guy's just a bizarre person. <laughs> Gang meets up with the Discount Avengers squad, and they escape on a flying boat. Unfortunately, they're attacked by wyverns, and so, Broken Sword Guy, I think his name was Hamburger or something, sacrifices himself, and they build it up to be this really epic moment, like- Yeah, this moment came off as jarring, I remember, because they, they didn't really have enough time to establish this character for, like, us to care about, so, sure, I mean, that's a fine criticism. Oh my god! I can't believe that guy sacrificed himself. Who was he again? And so we once again return to Sindri's house. And luckily Heimdall had Gallerhorn in his hands, which allows you to open portals to all the realms at once. I guarantee all of us predicted what the climax of the story would be as soon as they told us what this thing did. And so, this is where another very stupid moment happens in the story. Atreus, for some reason that is not explained in the least, decides he wants to help Odin again complete the mask because maybe the secrets of the universe will help you find a way out so that you don't have to kill him. I think, from what I remember, um, it was specifically because it would prevent Ragnarok. I think that's what the way that he sold it to Atreus was that this could end Rag or could prevent Ragnarok from happening. So he wanted to potentially be able to do that. That just from what I remember. It's been a while since I played the game, so we'd, I'd have to play it again, which I might do. But I thought we all agreed we were gonna kill him. Now, why are we suddenly doubting this? Why would you help the villain complete his quest? And you know what's even funnier about this? And again, I think he sold it as like a stopping Ragnarok. So. This is who's in the room right now with them. If you know the twist, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, somebody came into my stream and told me the twist is kind of fucked up. It really brings some dramatic irony to this scene on a second. Yeah, it's literally Heimdall's role in the mythology. Yes, with his ability to like uh, connect like what was it, like the seven different worlds together. Like, yeah, that's the whole point. You know, it's, I mean, I guess there's a comparison to Marvel, but I mean, that is lore accurate. And they've been using that mechanic the, in like the first game, especially it was huge going across like the seven, I think there are seven realms. You can watch. And so Atreus journeys to Asgard again, and we soon find out that Thor is a depressed alcoholic who knows his daughter and wife are disappointed in him. Well, we actually kind of got that in the beginning, right? He like refuses to drink alcohol, and Odin's like, you're no fun, right? That's like right in the beginning of the game, so just to be clear, it's not. And he just wants his daddy's love. Uh, yeah, they made the character complex and a, a flawed man. Like, what a weird thing to do, huh? To make them flawed characters. It's crazy. God, this fucking sucks. Why? And they I liked that about him. It was, it, like, who? nobody likes a boring fucking, like, predictable character. He's a... He was a flawed character. Try and make it entertaining by having a bar fight scene, but guess what? It just takes away some of your combat mechanics. That's the opposite of fun. You should give me special mechanics just for this encounter. Anyway, Atreus and Thor make their way to Niflheim, you get the mask without anything really special happening in this realm. And then Odin shows up, but so does Sif and a couple Valkyries, and Sif manages to convince Thor to try and kill Atreus since Kratos killed Heimdall, but he uses his get out of jail free card that Sindri conveniently thought to give him before. Yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> Before he returned to Asgard. <laughs> Conveniently? It makes sense. Hey, you're going to go on a dangerous mission? All right, take this in case something crazy happens. <gasps> wow. Who would have thought that? What a fucking crazy thing to do. Wow. It makes it kind of makes sense, no? You know? I mean, your perspective is that Sindri groomed him uh, for whatever reason, but, <laughs> like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Guard again. And now the good guys have the mask. Except one problem. Brock, of all characters, notices that Tyr is calling Atreus Loki. <coughs> and so it turns out Tyr was Odin the whole time, and he Yeah, Brock was the one who was able to identify it. I thought it was interesting. It was, a, it was, a, it was an interesting moment, and I think a lot of people appreciated it. Ills Brock, but Kratos manages to get the mask out of his hands just in time, so it was completely pointless? Well, I guess not completely, what? but I don't care about Brock at all. I'll what? Be honest. Why? The character Brock is a great character. Why don't you care about Brock? What the hell is this guy talking about? What? 
I mean, I guess that's why he skipped over the entire aspect before where like when they went, when he was with Brock to get the spear, uh, there was this whole thing about how like Brock was not completely full and he has this realization to himself. I'm pretty sure, right? He has a realization and he gets depressed about it. What? Why don't you like Brock? That's like, that's unforgivable. I feel like Brock is the most likable character. You have to like him. What the fuck? Once again, the writers are trying to build this up as a huge emotional moment. It is a huge emotional moment. We had two games where this character basically took on like, a, like, an, un, like an uncle role in some capacity to Atreus. It's very impactful when he dies. It's extraordinarily sad. What? But if you don't like any of the characters, this scene's oh, going to completely fall flat. Yeah, that's fine. But like, you don't like the characters because you don't like the game. You just want to complain about something with black people in it. And it gets even worse when you realize because Odin didn't get the mask, the game is now dragged out for another three hours. And to be honest, even those three hours feel really rushed. Because in the final act of the game, the heroes decide they need to build up their armies across all the realms. So that sounds like a huge epic quest on its own, right? Could probably be the plot of its own. Thank you so much for the one month uh, small gut from I'm, I'm not high. I'm the least empathetic and I cried when Brock died. That's what I'm saying, dude. It was sad as fuck. Game, and might have been originally. But instead, Kratos and Atreus just make their way to Muspelheim again. So that they can start Ragnarok. Yeah, that's what they do. And I think other people are, are trying to get uh, other groups to follow them. Meet Surtur, and he's once again another depressed character who doesn't want to help. Because his wife is gone, and then he ends up helping, though. Specifically because he knows both him and his wife would die, but it turns out that Kratos can use the Blades of Chaos to enhance his powers instead, which actually does have consequences. So I'll give the writers a bit of credit for that. And so while Kratos and Atreus fight off two Valkyries at the same time, Surtur becomes Ragnarok. But it seems he's not quite ready to start the siege. So Kratos and Atreus return to Midgard, and all of the allies gather and spend one last night. I mean, I'm pretty sure Freya is like the fucking uh, queen of the Valkyrie, so it makes sense that they're able to recruit all these allies very quickly, no? In a little camp outside of the Yggdrasil. <clears throat> and a lot of people hate Odin because he's a manipulative fuck. Little portal room from the first game. Atreus, who I once again remind you is a teenage boy, you're the one who was trying to get him to have sex with you were like complaining that he wasn't trying to fuck Angraboda. I'm so confused, bro. Thank you so much, Jack Esposito, for the five dollars. Hey Papa, US military fighter jet crashed in my hometown two days ago. Also, when are you going to do a stream where you talk to your viewers? Five oh five. Well, first of all, that's fucking crazy, man. You have the craziest story. Second of all, I'm not sure. Maybe soon. Oh my god. Request to sleep with his daddy one last time. And we are given the final flashback or vision of Faye, Kratos' wife, and it's a completely pointless scene. I think uh, the point is is that he misses his wife and everything's coming to fruition here. And then the next morning, oh. right Is it gay to miss your wife, guys? Before the final battle, Kratos and Freya give a rousing speech. Probably the worst I've ever seen. I mean, holy shit, there's so much wrong with this scene. I don't even know where to begin. Whether it's the bad cinematography or the incredibly bland room that the actual speech is set in, to the writing, which is... Not inspiring in the least. I can hide no longer. I do not want this war. We have suffered enough. Why couldn't Kratos give okay. this speech after he blows Gallarhorn and like Jormungandr and Fenrir are in the background or something? And we're given like a wide shot of all the oh, armies or some shit. You know, something like Lord of the Rings, something that feels epic. Man, this is just. I don't know. I feel like at this point we're just on the, probably the most. Uh, we're just complaining about everything at this point. You know? It's lame. You can't tell me Sony Santa Monica looked at this and thought, yeah, this is fine. This is cool. This will get the players amped up for the finale. And so anyway, he blows the horn. They travel to Asgard, and we get our huge Avengers Endgame moment. And all of our buddies from the two games show up and wage war against Asgard. And it's supposed to be a really cool moment, but honestly... It was. It was a cool moment, just to be clear. <laughs> it was a good moment. It was a good ending. It's not. I know people are going to say I fucking hate everything, especially since I'm sure plenty of people... Yeah, the problem is, is that you don't even understand basic story plot points. So, like, that's what makes it particularly fucking bizarre when you complain, because you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, you just lack basic comprehension skills. It's factually fucking weird. People played this, thought this was cool. 
but none of this crazy epic background stuff that's happening affects the gameplay outside of some random wyverns raining fire on the arenas. If you just ignore the skybox, this might as well just be a normal level of the game, except they just throw a slightly wider variety of enemies against you. I, I don't even know how to contend with that criticism. It's like the final fight. There are other fights going on while you're there. The skybox is there for ambient feeling. It's supposed to make you feel like you're part of a war. What are you talking about? I don't understand the criticism. I, tr I truly don't get it. But, um... Incredible. It doesn't help that multiple times during the goddamn apocalypse, the characters <sighs> stop to have a heart-to-heart -heart with each other. Are you fucking kidding me? You've taken all the tension out of the story so many times. Not to mention you have to play as Atreus again, and he oh, gets no. to go full bear mode, guys. He's upgraded from a wolf to a bear. He's climbed another tier on the gay scale. <laughs> I'm not understanding. He was a bear the first- what? <laughs> from a wolf again, and he gets to go full bear mode, guys. He's upgraded from a wolf to a bear. He's climbed another tier on the gay scale. <laughs> I, like, I get the joke, but it doesn't make sense because the first time you see him transform in the game is when he turns into a fucking bear. So, like, you're, you don't, what you're saying doesn't make any sense. He literally, like, Kratos has to fight him as a bear. So, like, his first transformation uh, that we see, I think, in general, but at least in this game, is a bear. So, this, like, your, your insinuation is that this is the first time he transforms into a bear. But, hey, good job, brother. <laughs> and then... Um, it sounds like he could just transform into different animals. Immediately, he talk no jutsus through out of killing him, blaming Odin for everything, and it works. Okay. And so all the good guys... I mean, they all could realize that he's a manipulative fuck, so... Odin, so I'm pretty sure that's probably strengthening that uh, thing, but okay. His team up. Kratos finally has his second showdown against Thor. After beating him, he actually manages to convince him not to fight anymore for the sake of their children. Yeah. Yes. This is God of War. This game series is known for letting you oh, kill gods. Dude, this I, I this guy does this guy's it's like it's it's exhausting. This guy's really stupid. The whole thing is about how horrible things have happen when you kill gods. It's the whole entire game. He, it's reinforced from the first game. It's said over and over and over again. So I don't understand. Like, it's fine that you don't like this de decision they've made to move there, but like, it makes lore sense. And at this point, you're just bitching about something, and it's clear you don't even know because you haven't even referenced that at all. You haven't been like, I know that they're trying to go this way, but I don't like it. That's fine. But he's intentionally not acknowledging actual the points so that he can bitch about it. It's like, this is very obviously what it's about. It's not about constantly killing each other and going through like a cycle of violence. He destroyed an entire world because he kept killing gods. I think that's probably the big part of it. Thank you for the $2 from CSLAM22. This dude is a professional hater. Yeah, for real, man. He's fucking dumb as hell. That's like one of the main points of playing these games. Again, oh the God. power fantasy, but whatever. Kratos of is what, a killing people? <laughs> what? A changed man. Okay. He's super mature now, guys. Yeah, that's kind of the point. And of course, as soon as Thor agrees to lay down his arms, Odin stabs him in the back, literally, and kills him. You're showing him killing him from the front. Incredible. And so now we have our final boss battle with That's a pretty significantly impactful moment, but okay. Kratos, Atreus, and Freya all They did a really good job building even bad character to bad guy characters, which Thor is supposed to be a bad guy, into like more of like uh gray area characters. And by the time you're like finally built onto like, oh look, they're actually friendly with each other. Um, he gets fucking killed by his own. And like, you actually care about the character. You see him, like, who he is, his flaws as a person. One of those flaws is being like an alcoholic, being too um, submissive to his father. So many different things. And by the, the end of it, it's just like, he dies. That's an emotionally impactful scene. You complained before because the other one wasn't, which I agree with you, when the guy with the sword died. But like, now this one is emotionally impactful. And you're just like, yeah, he kills his son. Let's move on. It's like you're desperate to not give this, uh, you know, this game any anything like not like nothing that's what it, you're just complaining about the bad and then you just gloss over the good without making any real comments teaming up to <coughs> lay waste to him and it's an absolute button mash fest all i did was spam runic attacks the that's because you're playing on normal entire time and did surprisingly well beat him in one try yeah because you're on an easier difficulty it really feels like a step down from every other final boss in the series 
I think it was pretty... Not not for nothing, but the final boss in God of War 3 was dog shit. To be absolutely real with you, I did not like God of War 3 particularly. Like, you just fucking... You just punched him in, like, a different way. It was stupid. I didn't like the plot of God of War 3 really at all. Because it made it made Kratos, like, the good guy. Like, oh, once Pandora's box was opened, actually, uh, 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 Zeus became a dickhead. And it's like, really? Not really. It's not actually what happened. Okay, like uh, Kratos was abusing his power in the second God of War. You were a bad person in God of War Two, which I thought was great. Like the like, bad guy is the, your main character, and then you know you fight to, to to come back from it. So I didn't like that. So like, it's what are you talking about? Even the fight against Balder felt more epic than this because there's really no sense of scale. You're just fighting him in a basement, and he shoots magic spells at you. Oh, and somehow I almost forgot at the end of the first phase against Odin. Freya gives the cringiest line in the game. You have no hold on me anymore. Wow. So Well, I mean she he he imprisoned her for a very long time, so brave. Oh, oh my oh, god. Good. I it can't just be cringe though, guys. It has to be feminist. This guy's complaining he thinks it's too feminist. That's what is actually going on here. He's not like, hey, this was a cringe moment. He's like, this is a oh look, I added another feminism moment in here. Stunning and fucking brave, dude. Ah! This guy's like actual has like legitimate brain rot. Not woke at all. Yep, there you go. Oh, guys, not woke at all. Oh, husband. And anytime there's a female character that happens to be sh uh, strong after a very long established story of having good powers, ah, uh, uh, woman bad. Like it, the issue with female protagonists isn't that they exist. The issue with female protag protagonists are that when they make them a Mary Sue, that's the problem. And they did not do that to her. So. You always sought knowledge well. Now, I'm going to teach you what it's like to lose everything. Why am I stuck in that dumb as fuck? Bow to your queen! Really? I mean, she's literally the queen of the gods. That's... <laughs> like, you know that, right? Like, that's that's where that comes from? That's his wife. But, okay. My god, this comes across as some kind of feminist torture fantasy. No, it doesn't. You're a weird person. What the fuck? And of course, when you finally beat him, instead of killing him, Kratos lets his son decide, and he decides to trap Odin's soul inside of one of the giant marbles. Uh, yeah, kind of lore accurate there, man. Like, that's the kind of the whole point of the thing, is to give his son more choices and decisions on how he wants to op like go about things. That's kind of a big part of the story there, buddy. So. But then, like an absolute Chad, Sindri comes in and smashes the marble. Yeah, because he killed his brother. That's what comes next. I take back everything I said about him being a possible pedophile. As soon as that made you not think he's a pedophile once he killed Odin? Okay, you're a weird guy. Since his brother dies, he actually becomes the only other based character in the game. And so the heroes have won, except there's one okay. problem. Because Surtur didn't fuse with his waifu, Ragnarok is out of control, but- What are you talking about? Them fusing was going to start Ragnarok. Just they decided to start Ragnarok in a different way. What are you talking about? The heroes managed to escape off. What the fuck? This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm pretty sure what happened is those two were in love, and if they get together, they cause Rag they cause Ragnarok. But he didn't want to do that because he didn't want her to die. So what he did is he he empowered Kratos's blades of chaos, and then they had each other's hearts. So he stabbed uh, Surtur in the heart and started Ragnarok because they had like the opposing power. What is he talking about? Does this guy, uh, he, okay, whatever. Screen, and the game ends with you traveling to the top of some mountain where Atreus tells his- I wish, I honestly kind of wish that Kratos died. Father that he needs to go off on his own quest with Angraboda to go find the rest of the giants. And in the only other touching moment in the game, Kratos finally lets go of his son and allows him to be his own man. And I really have nothing to complain about here. I think this part was actually well done. And then immediately afterward, we find out there was a secret second prophecy that Kratos was to become the new revered god of the Norse realms, effectively tying him to this place, meaning this is the end of his story. 
and thank God for that. I don't want to. <laughs> I, know, I, I like how he says feminist torture fantasy when all he's been fantasizing about is brutally murdering every other character in the game with Kratos. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking true, man. That's true. See Sony butcher Kratos anymore, but I absolutely okay. promise you I will not buy a God of War game starring Atreus. So they better. I would. Either reboot this shit. As long as it's more entertaining, which I believe it would be, because like God of War is like all the games, like they did a really good job with these like remakes. It or just let it die. The sad thing is, you get to play the post game immediately after this, and there's a bunch of other side quests. There's all those berserker super bosses to fight, and when I played a few more hours, I actually was having fun consistently. You know why? Because I could actually do what I want. I could actually engage in the gameplay and fight enemies and just ignore the ambient background dialogue because it really didn't matter. So you had fun with the game when the story wasn't involved. It sounds like you just don't like the story. And it's probably because you don't understand it because you're a fucking idiot. I don't think you got a single thing right in this entire thing. Without having to deal with forced walking sequences or countless cutscenes or stupid emotional bait... Or any of the other bullshit that... It's, he just doesn't like complex emotional stories. And that's fine. But, like, <laughs> this is a him problem. I mean, you just don't play this game. It's not for you. Not everything has to be for you. It is in modern Sony games. Just wandering around the realms, even though it was areas I'd already been to, was more fun than the actual goddamn story mode. The linear story okay. was less interesting than wandering around the world doing side quests. Gotcha. How do you fuck up this bad? Again, you're like the only person who did. I, I, don't, I don't know a single other person who thought God of War's story was bad. This is a very much you thing. You didn't like the story because you don't understand it, and but you like the gameplay. That's fine, but okay. But the game's totally 10 out of 10, guys. If you just ignore all the constant cutscenes and walking simulator moments and fake loading screens and shitty okay. Atreus gameplay segments, it's totally 10 out of 10. Okay. Game of the year 2022, no doubt. I'm not going to name any names here because I don't exist to just start drama with random other YouTubers, but there are people who are supposedly real film critics, people who actually analyze stories in their structure. This guy couldn't even, this guy doesn't understand any part of any story. Again, he didn't know that vault Tech sold vaults, okay? I said, I have it's like the beginning clip of one of my videos uh, <clears throat> about him. <clears throat> I think it's the one with the, where he talks about the entire Fallout story. Um... This guy doesn't understand any story structure. He's dumb as fuck. Who are ignoring all of the obvious flaws with this game. Bro, the first flaw you, you brought up was that 12-year-olds weren't having sex with each other. I think that we're, we're good on your commentary. If this was a film, these people would be ripping it to shreds. But because it's a video game, they have no standards. How did we go from a Greek tragedy, which, yeah, had a lot of juvenile moments. It was definitely intended for edgy teenage boys. Okay. boys to a degree but that's not to say the original games had no depth there's a video called god of war was always deep you cowards great title by the way what does it have to do with anything by endless jess that covers this subject pretty extensively so i'll just direct you to that video instead of extending this one even further what is the point of what you're saying i don't understand to now this infantile pseudo mature marvel movie for man children people who refuse okay. to actually grow up and have real responsibilities that you are criticizing kratos for not killing people and you're saying that because he has like a he doesn't want to kill gods and like cause more issues and you're saying that everyone else is immature and doesn't understand the story is just weird being getting a wife and having children right being an anti-natalist does not make you mature it just makes you a depressed nihilist like everyone else what? and this is not me acting holier than thou i it certainly is i've never pretended to be mature i know what i like I like the super edgy shit. I yeah, because you're immature, and that's okay. But like, it's weird that you're calling this immature because you're, in, but you're the one that's actually immature. It's weird. I like Dark Siders. I like the original God of War games. Okay. I even like fucking Shadow the Hedgehog. It's a bad game. <laughs> okay. But I like how over the top it is. Given it's a fucking cartoon character with guns. It I told you he was autistic. He likes Sonic the Hedgehog, so let's, like, come on. It's you people who are pretending that this is some super deep shit. Uh, it's just weird that there's a, everything is... A, I, I actually think that this guy has some kind of intellectual disability. Because he it's not that he just didn't like it. He just... He can't even find the value in it. Like, he had... Like, uh, like he's, <laughs> he's fucking dumb. I don't know what to tell you. 
There, there's something he just fundamentally is missing something in his fucking brain. I think that the only reason that people listen to his commentary is because he's just he's just completely contrary. There's nothing of particular intelligent value out of anything that he says or does. He's not funny. He's not entertaining. He's not interesting. He constantly gets plot points wrong. He's just a contrarian that like rage farms. That's pretty much the, all it is. They have the issue. The Last of Us 1 actually was somewhat deep to a degree. It was a very well told story, even though it was a story we'd already heard dozens of times by now, right? This is not well handled in the least. Okay. The writing team is highly incompetent, <laughs> and in no small part because Anthony Birch wrote for it. Okay. A man who is a literal comma mia and who a cuck. I mean, again, you're the guy that was you wanted 14 year olds to have sex, so I'm not really understanding why you said anything else. Thank you for the five dollars from Buckovan. The only valid thing he said so far is Shadow the Hedgehog 2005 is fun. Okay, and I've never played it before, so his wife divorced him and took his Wii U, and he's done okay. plenty of other pathetic things in his time. But if you let an actual gotcha. comma mia write for God of War, what the fuck is wrong with you, Sony? You it sounds like the guy got divorced, and you're calling him a cuck. I'm very confused. You are fucking dead to me, and I know I've already said that multiple times, but they are so dead to me at this point, dude. I'm only playing these games to review them. That's it. It sounds like you have a you have a mission to always hate Sony because you think everybody's a bad person and a cuck, so you're always just going to disagree with whatever. That's just pretty much what it sounds like. You're just always going to be anti-Sony. That's all. That your entire brain, you're a sheep in the opposite direction. You're just like, I hate something so much, I will never give it its like credit. It's certainly not for my own enjoyment. Now, all of that being said, is this a bad game? No. No, it's a phenomenal game. It's not, and only because the gameplay is good. The combat designers did their job. In fact, they're the only people on this team okay. worth their salt. They actually made this dumpster fire fun, at least for the 20% of the time that you're actually fighting things. The other 80% was either incredibly boring or insulting to both my intelligence and my masculinity. And I think that- Well, I mean, you don't really have any masculinity, bro. You're like a fucking five foot six basement dweller. What are you talking about, man? What the fuck? Was the intention. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Games are not made for gamers anymore. And they're slowly trying to not make them for men anymore either. At least what are you talking about? Kratos resonates, I think, with a lot of men, especially men that are maturing. Re Kratos resonates with any man who's had like issues with their anger and is trying to become a better person. Like, I don't really understand. Like, what what is a man to you? Like an edgy fuck? I don't really get it. At least not catering to men's tastes. They're what are you talking about? Not everything has to be fucking tits. Like, play a game with tits. This is not what it's about. What taste are you looking for? 14 year olds fucking? Like, I don't understand. Trying to make games quote unquote for everyone there is no such what? thing the fuck are you, you cannot about? make a good game that also appeals to everybody you just can't oh. you can make a mediocre game that does that okay. and many exist but a good game caters to a specific audience and unfortunately okay. they do not want the god of war audience I would, I would say that god of war this god of war right now is probably the best god of war game that they ever made unironically i love the old games i like i wouldn't have even said that i've been again about that god of war 18 uh 2018 but i think it was phenomenal the story was fantastic it plays well i thought it was great i loved the story i thought it was a brilliant game you could disagree that's fine but I thought it was phenomenal. So to sit here and be like, oh, it wasn't that good. It was fantastic. It was a fantastic game. I don't think that, that's not even a disagreeable take. You know, it would have won game of the year if not for uh, Baldur's Gate 3, which I understand why they won. I get it. Um, high, heavy competition that year, but. Fuck this game and fuck all the Sony fanboys who think it's a masterpiece. That word has now lost all meaning. I hate okay. to say it. But Elden Ring is probably game of the year this year. Or was it Elden Ring? Oh, it was Elden Ring. I'm sorry. I can think it was Baldur's Gate 3. My bad. It was Elden Ring. Whatever. It's fine. Oh, I can understand that that one won too. I can understand why that would win as well. That was a really good game. It was like hot contenders, you know? No, okay. Baldur's Gate 3 won out. Um, it's a Spider-Man, right? That's what it was. Here, despite having Yeah, that's what it is. Most of the God of War audiences are like fathers now. That's the whole thing. Having one of the most critical videos of it. I think it's considerably better than this game. Okay. That's about it. I'll see you next time, guys. All right. Enough of this guy. I don't think we're ever going to interact with his content again. This fucking garbage dog shit.